On today's episode of Let's Talk FGO, we're back with news such as that, as humbly predicted, the Mahoyo collab is coming. That's right, you get two collabs this year if you're in GP. In two years if you're in NA. There's also some other stuff going on. We maybe gear it up for the NA collab as well with a long pre release. We've got some rank ups, we've got some banners, we've got some stuff. And I want to let you all know that I, Omega, had to really hold back from doing our usual joke whenever I say the words stuff. <laughs> With me, laughing it up over there, is Lucky, your other host. It me. And uh, uh, welcome to today's episode of Let's Suck FGO. <laughs> That's right. I hope everyone is enjoying Fate Grand Order, a.k.a. nothing but misfortune and ill omens. And while we here at Studio Mega like to bring you the latest nephew related news and memes, we will be talking on current about current and future events for the JP and E version of the game. So anyone not wanting spoilers should prepare to face the Alzaki sisters. Yeah. So uh, we got a few things to talk about today, this week. If you were, well, I won't say exactly living under a rock because you know you may have observed that the show wasn't in your sub box last week, but. In case you missed any of the explanation for it, I uh, didn't do the show last week. I wasn't feeling super good. I was a little sick towards the tail end of last week. And we didn't have a lot of stuff going on. So we skipped a week, came back, did some normal streams and stuff. So we're back now. And uh, we're going to catch you all up. So we hope you enjoy this episode. It'll be full of stuff. So, this stuff, the episode, is brought to you by our patrons like Adam DeHartBlack, SDG, Call Me Zed, Carlos, Dragon. Fight Sides, Jeremy Vasquez, JDV9000, Just Faye, Charlie, Legendary Boss, Hunter, Liam Kessler, Regent Raptor, Rise of Kenji, Rogue Robin, Shrub, Warsh, Empire, Some Guy Named Bob, and Varian the Crow. If you like what we do, want to see work, consider joining us on Patreon. You can get access to episodes early, all sorts of goodies, and it helps us out. Thank you for your support, everybody. And I had to take a uh, brief pause there to cough a lot. But we're back now. Ahem. Okay, we're going. <laughs> Don't you worry. But yes, I'm feeling a lot better these past couple of days, so we're ready to go on with the show. So we're going to catch you up on all the stuff. I don't need my list of patrons anymore, so I'll scooch that down. And that means that it's time to check out with everybody's favorite Kohai, Smash. Senpai! Senpai! Okite kudasai! Because that makes it time for... Wake the fuck up, Senpai, regular Senpai, bro tip. So, uh... I'm pretty sure I didn't get to the phase where I wrote a pro tip for last week, so it's not like you're missing one. But I have a new pro tip for you this week, which is we do have the Learning with Manga collab coming in today. They've literally announced the pre-release campaign, like, last night. It's going. And that is a limited bronze, so make sure to stockpile your FP if you haven't already. I'm pretty sure I still have plenty, as I routinely have a pretty full friends list and, you know, make use of clickety-clacking on everybody. Use that one cheap CE for extra FP. But some of you I know are... Uh, crazy and may need to recoup your losses so get ready for that so yeah we have uh, many fun times to happen in the futures but that's all for that we'll let you know more about more stuff later as we go on that means it's time to check in with records on the throne a regular achievement topic uh this week it's just me um, I am uh, pleased to report that my uh, tie suite is uh, 10 10 10 NP5 and small protected it's like, I love my new child. Yep. I uh, alluded to this in the pre-show to our patrons who are listening live, but uh, I'm farming right now as we speak, uh, so mine's not complete yet, but we're getting pretty close. I think I have, like, one more round of NP copies, and then I have to get some... Is it two? I think I got two left in the store for essential materials. Uh, we'll get into, the, you know, our usual uh, cleanup and, and, and final thoughts and stuff, but I will say in general, uh, while this event is actually quite good, I think the only thing I would say that I do have that is a negative is the currency farming uh, is quite a lot. You you need a lot of these little guys. Yeah, I think I was remarking to some people. It was like, yes, we might have. I think I was telling, uh, talking to Loth in particular. But yeah, you do have quite a bit of time, but you also need quite a bit of cons. Yeah, Loth was a little behind. And so you still got like six days left. So it's not a terrible curve. But if you are not like through on story and working on the post game now, you probably want to pick up the pace because you're going to probably be eating some apples because you need a lot of them. And while Taisui does help, uh, it's just one of those things where, like, trying to build your optimal team comp for farming does not equal your optimal team comp for drops because, you know, all your different servants give you different con currencies. I think that's, like, the only real drawback is that, like, you know, the... 
literally to get NP copies, it's like 300 of multiple types of pop or 200 of everything. And that's also how much you need for Ascension Mats. It's like, I, okay, you guys, you know, you're trying out three week events. You don't know what the currency curve is like. 300 is a lot, even with, with bonuses, because you can only get so many pluses per drop on a six man team. So it's just, it's, it's a, it's a slow process that mostly involves me, uh, running over Tengu with my Rider Da Vinci over and over and over again, because the, the 313 node is really complex. Or is it like a 213? Whatever. No, it's, um, it's a 131. One. Yeah. Yeah, 131 one one is weird. I was able to make a three turn for it, but uh, this requires me busting out, um, uh, I uh, bust out a Vlad and my uh, Boki Doji and a Castoria. Yeah, I don't have your uh, NP5 Vlad. Do I even have an NP? Am I still missing Berserker Vlad? I might be. Oh, even then, it still took me some fucking jank because even with like all the buffs I put on him and NP gain stuff, he still only got like what was it? Um, I think it was like fifty six percent refund on uh, doing it on, which is you know. Pretty good, but it's not enough for me to get a loop on, so I actually had to go in and um do his um his um app in skill that gives him a free twenty percent. Mm. And I was able to do it. Like I was actually trying to fix few things. Like um another thing I did is I actually unlocked uh Melisine's uh anti lancers. Like, would that be enough damage? It was not enough damage. <laughs> mm, yeah. Ugh. So no, I had to I had to fiddle around to get my three turn going on it. But once I got it going, it it works uh quite well. So, I am also um, partially blessed because I was able to get two CE drops. So I have an MLB um, event CE and one extra. So that's like, you know, plus three on two cards. Which is pretty good. It also helps that the card is a 50% charge or when it's um Yeah. I was also lucky enough to get a couple of uh, drops early. So yeah, there, 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 there's a few strats. I could probably try and make it work, but I, I like the reliability that just... Double Castoria, uh, Ryder Da Vinci, with my Ryder Da Vinci being NP2, uh, and all of her relevant skills are very high level, is just, it just works. I, I have no, no concerns about not looping. We have plenty of apples. Also, I'm sorry, while I will edit out some of the noise, if you hear me, like, sneezing and sniffling, sorry, my sinuses have decided to be gooey all of a sudden. The plants attack. Uh, it might just be that it was kind of warm in here, but now it's, you know, well after dark, so it's starting to cool off. But I swear, I've been perfectly fine all day until literally right now that we're going. So yes, I'm sure by, by next week I'll be all wrapped up because I'm like most of the way done. But there's quite a bit of farming to go on. We'll talk more about some of that stuff and uh, obviously our thoughts about story and things later. Story but we don't things. have any evils, so we're going to move on to Did You Finish Your Master Missions? These are obviously this week's ma- Master Missions. If you needed my help with last week's Master Missions, I'm sorry, but it's too late. You can't go back. You can't change the past. So to complete this week's Master Missions, you're going to need to defeat 15 enemies with the Heaven and then the Earth Attribute. Those are two separate Master Missions. And then another 15 for Traits, uh, 15 Wild Beasts, and then 15 Demonic Enemies. And then complete 5 quests, complete 10 quests. Do the event. You will be fine. I believe you can get all of these in the event somewhere. And if you can't get the Wild Beast, you can always go to, like, the Jura Forest and beat up wolves. So many wolves. But... That does mean we can move swiftly on to Skelegrams. That's right, I did the Skeletor voice this time. I don't always do it, though. I've got to keep you on your toes. So, honestly, uh, not super a lot, a lot of news, but compared to when I first wrote this last week, much more news. <laughs> At least twice as much news. Yeah. So, uh, obviously, currently ongoing, you know, would have been fresh uh, last show date, but n- now is is still in the middle of it, but uh, part eight of Evocation Festival, our next round of Welfares in the Shop, is coming up. So that started the third and is going on until the 17th. Uh, BB, Summer Ishtar, Kagetora, and Summer Yu are permanently added to the Evocation Shop with your spirit leaves. We have a buff for Welfare Kagetora. Her arts buff uh, now lasts three turns, as opposed to one turn, and is a 20% battery... It's the magic number, apparently. Apparently. Uh, but also, there's a, yeah, like a, a fuck ton of little banners, if you're interested in this. Uh, they've got banners for, uh, standalone banners for Melt, Quetz. Uh, we've got a Summer Nero and Summer Fran banner. There's an Old Man Lee banner. And then a triplicate, uh, kind of, you know, uh, Ebby 3 Yume Ren themed banner with Zhang Yu, Prince of Landling, and Zhufu. So, like a, like a triplicate effort there. 
And uh, that is currently, uh, I believe, soaking up uh, JP's event time until they launch their next thing, which we'll talk about at the end, because that's the most recent news. But wait in anticipation. That means it's time, though, for NA news. Uh, obviously, we are still on goifying, on goopifying with uh, Water Monster Crisis. But we do also, because we're in the last week ish of that, uh, we're also jamming to some new news. You know, we're filling out the time period. Sorry, I was confused for a second by me going in my files to save the thumbnail. Hmm. I got lost for a second. I found it again. All right, we're good. Anyway, NA, uh, number one, Advanced Quests Part 4. Uh, dropped very recently on the 11th. This is a wave of quests for CEs for Proofs, Octuplet Crystals, and Dragon Fangs. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> Jeez, my nose. Okay. Uh, next in the line, I lost track of what I was doing there, sorry, is the pre-release for the Learning with Manga collab. Uh, the pre-release also started the 11th. That's going on until the 25th. Log in during this time period for about a week, I want to say, about seven days. Uh, you'll get some apples and some St. Quartz. Now, very interestingly, uh, this also includes half AP on Embers until the 25th. So just through this whole campaign, half AP Embers. It's been a little bit, but we're chilling. Bruh, we just got done with a lot of it. Do we really need half AP Embers? Uh, I mean, I guess it depends on on where you got. I probably don't, because I like haven't touched the shop Embers at all, and I'm still chewing through my backlog from Lotto, which wasn't <laughs> that deep, by the way. I only did, like, like 12 or 13 boxes, but I'm still chewing through those, uh, leveling up my Taisui, so, like, yeah, I don't know, uh, but there are, like, a pretty big smattering of banners, and there's a pretty big uh, event bonus list, so if you did need to catch up on some leveling, I'm sure it, it's not bad. <laughs> it's just so funny that, like, usually when we got half AP in the, like, half AP dailies in the past, it's like, you have one singular week inside this event that's, like, two or three weeks long. Uh, this time it's just like fuck. You can have you can have half AP until the twenty fifth. We don't care. <laughs> Somebody's working on some. Yeah, sorry. A patron typed in all chats that they still have embers from the last Christmas. Uh, I don't have that that bad with embers, but yeah, I, I still have leftovers from from our past several events. So it's no no biggie ziggy. But like I said, some people will find it useful, uh, especially because we are looking at double suck chance, double FP, and half AP on rank ups and interludes for servants who are in the event. Uh, of which there will be lots of them. I have not actually written that down. I will uh, go to the website and read the list off to you in a second. But it's fairly extensive. Uh, it turns out that uh, learning FGO with manga, uh, a manga, uh, though, uh, you know, a joke, but a manga that is ostensibly about FGO, uh, has a lot of characters in FGO in it. <laughs> so uh, there is a pretty big list of characters who are going to get uh, the, you know, ability on there for those rank ups, interludes, etc. Uh, so if you uh, missed your Learning with Manga collab CE, that's going to be uh, back in the RP shop, I believe, to unlock, to, to get the quest for that. Uh, All the Statesman has, I believe, been permanently added. Yes. Uh, so if you bought it in the RP shop previously, you get it anyway, and you may get a refund on your matters. Um, and also, uh, Bunyan's costume has been added back permanently to the dressmaking shop. So, you know, you can catch up on all your Learning with Manga-related stuff. Uh, we also have a, uh, a bold, spicy list of rank-ups. Uh, well, we are, you know, mo most of the way to a, to a, a you know, rank-up event. Because there's five of these. But the uh, rank-ups that have been added. So we've got uh, Summer Tamamo, Tamamo Lancer. Yeah. Uh, she's had her invul buffed. Uh, so her crit strength and star drop, or, you know, her star gen uh, buffs are increased to three turns. Uh, it also is now a battery. And the stun is gone. If you complete the rank up, that they, they we've we've experienced such power creep that all the things Tomo's Goddess Morph does it doesn't actually matter if it stuns her. <laughs> True. So hey, good for that. Uh, Altera's uh, you know natural body skill got upgraded, so it is now a battery and also increases her critical strength for three turns. But that's the one that also like heals her and gives her star absorb for one turn. Uh, though this is like her. Uh, like fourth interlude or rank up or whatever, so you gotta gotta have made some decent progress on there. But yeah, uh, that's another very important one. Uh, Summer and Bonnie and Mary Reed uh, got their treasure hunt skill upgraded to also be a battery. Uh, I'm I'm pretty sure this was the point in the year and in the overall FGO meta that like this is where we realized oh everybody gets a battery. 
it's not literally true, but it's very you're going to see a lot of characters getting 20% batteries added right now. Um it it's it's funny how much just giving you that little bit little bit of extra free NP gain or not so free depending on the skill, but you know what I mean. But that little bit of extra NP gain like fixes a lot of servants deals just using their, you know, unique super move a lot more. Uh so Summer Helena got a buff to her NP. Uh so obviously it does the normal uh damage multiplier up, but now it also uh gives all allies a slight MP gauge increase, which increases with overcharge, so actually like getting you in the loop meta now. Uh and lastly, regular and Bonnie and Mary Reed, the writer version, also got an upgrade to their uh crit you know, their one turn crit buff, which was a little lackluster. Now it also is a huge star bomb as well. Uh, also by the way, as I'm looking at the news post for this event, uh we do have the uh Limited time special my room as well, if you haven't looked in there. This is the one where uh, your entire room is replaced with foes. The best one! Yes. Uh, you know, you've got a uh, long foe, you know, as a as a towel rack. You've got foes on all your shelves. There's foes on and under your bed. Uh, there's also the fucking attack on Titan Sky foe. <laughs> uh, and uh, it the the website does want me to let you know in big, bold block text Certain parts of the background move, so keep an eye on, see what changes. Well, now I'm curious. Where's my phone? Yeah, I'm. I'm like I said. I'm. I'm mid uh, blasting fucking Tango in new way, so I'm busy. Like I said, uh, since I got um, Tai Sui to where I want him, I've been taking a break. I've actually, I know, uh, much contrary to my character, I actually have been trying to get through some interludes and some rank ups because that's just courts just waiting to be waiting to be munched on. Yeah, I think, well, I need to catch up on this last batch of uh, advanced quests, but I probably also need to get back in the interlude mines, especially because they've added, you know, like five rank ups now as well. And it's, it's like Summer Doth section. approaches and Summer Buki isn't going to roll herself. Yeah. Plus, you know, you've got milestones. Every 10 of those is also more Saint Quartz. Mm hmm. But uh, we also have uh, banners as well to coincide for this, you know, pre release campaign. So you've got a Summertime with Summer Helena banner, if you're into that. There is an Astolfo double feature, which I'm not sure if they have done before, but it's very funny no matter how many times they do it. Saber Astolfo in main, and then regular Astolfo is the four-star. Uh, you've got a Ryder Da Vinci and Summer Anne and Mary on one end, and also a regular Da Vinci and a Summer Mary with the uh, IE as the other one. And uh, like I said, I did not actually write it down because there would just be so goddamn many. <laughs> Uh, but there is a huge fucking, uh, list of possible bonus servants for the upcoming event, including, uh, it explicitly says, well, they do not list the exact value, uh, it will be both bond gain up and attack up, so there's a damage bonus for this. Uh, also, if you're curious, we do have a few bits of bobs to catch up on. I'm not entirely sure, because the Water Monster Crisis ends in about six days, but I'm taking a gamble that we'll have the time to do the pregame next week on the 19th because the pre-release doesn't end until the 25th. So I'm not sure exactly where the overlap is, but uh, we'll do our the usual deep dive on event mechanics there. But I will read you the list of bonus servants to prepare you. <clears throat> Time to play some classical piano as I get ready for this. Uh, bonus sabers. We'll do this by class because that's how this fucking table is organized. Uh, your bonus sabers are... Altera, Artoria, Saber Astolfo, Sigurd, Dayon, Nero, Prince of Landling. Uh, your bonus archers is honestly uh, smaller. That's funny. Uh, you've got uh, Archer Anne and Mary, uh, Attila the Santa, Archer Helena, and Urale, who is our first three star in this list, by the way. Uh, it's got it's going to be a little bit of a big budget uh, event list, though. Uh, there are, are several welfares on here as well, because for Lancers, we've got uh, Lancer Tomo, Vitra. Canis, Elizabeth Bathory, the regular one, and John Arc Alter Santa Lily. <laughs> For Rider bonuses, you've got oh here's some more three stars. Okay, uh, you've got Rider Da Vinci, you've got regular Anne and Mary, you've got Rider Astolfo, you've got Cinderella Elizabeth Bathory. Good of them to tag her in there uh, fairly recently. Uh, you've got Rider Ishtar, Mary Antoinette, regular Rider Martha, Boudica, and Ushiwaka. For casters, you've got. Anastasia, Castro Da Vinci, regular Tomo. Like he's going to get some FP this time. Yeah! Uh, Castro Mary Antoinette, that's her summer version. Medea Lily, Nidacris, Nursery Rhyme, Queen of Sheba, Thomas Edison. For assassins, you've got Jack, obviously. 
uh, Oskabahime, Steno, Wuzetan, Yume Ren, and uh, Serenity. How's on a Serenity? For Berserkers, you just have uh, Adelante, Alter, Kiyohime, and Paul Bunyan. Oh, so nice. it's good that they're putting her permanently, but, you know, we're, we're playing a little fast at least. Uh, you have access to a uh, regular Jean d'Arc as a bonus ruler, uh, Summer uh, Da Vinci ruler as well. Yang Guifei will be a bonus, and so will Mash, obviously. So uh, a very robust list, a lot of early servants, quite a lot of welfares in there. So uh, should be a good spread. And uh, as I mentioned before, uh, if you need to catch up on any of those units... They are moving! Well, the foes are moving. One's like sliding up and down a wall. The other one's just kind of bouncing. But uh, yeah, so if if you have have some of those older units, but have not been keeping up on their rank ups and interludes to make sure they've got all their shiniest bells and whistles, like I said, those are all going to be half AP during this time period. So, yes, Longfoe gets finish. longer. Well, that's great. But yes, uh, as mentioned uh, earlier, a little bit. But uh, in addition to Evocation Festival wrapping up in a few days, we also have news of what will be the next big event for FGOJP. Gasp. Uh, they have announced what their Golden Week collab will be in their usual uh, period, and uh, it is officially uh, going to be Mahoyo. Yes. Uh, there's not a CM yet, but there is a very light teaser uh, showing uh, Mahoyo Alco in there. And uh, yeah, no, uh, it's uh, been pretty big news. Uh, yep, I believe I that uh, FGO excited. and uh, Mayo have been trending on Twitter basically all day. Yep. Uh, people are going to watch in speculations, uh, people saying who they want for servants. You know, um, a lot of um, a lot of uh, hype has been generated around how Mayo has a, I believe, a 98% positive score on Steam. Yep. A lot of such things. Uh, talking about how I believe, um, I, actually, I believe it's today that I think uh, Mayo was released. I think. I think it was released April 12th. Uh, yeah, the anniversary has been coming up. Yes, initial release date April twelfth. Yeah, April twelfth, so, twenty twelve, which was twelve years ago. I'm honestly, I mean, we we were calling it ourselves for a while, but I'm ki- kind of shocked that like more more people didn't realize that the dates were going to line up for this news. You know, like I said, the the twelve years after it 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 came out, the twelfth yeah. in the year twelve. Well, sense. yeah, no, I was pretty sure it was going to be Mahoyo this year when we did the um, Samurai Remnant collab, you know, for for um, back in January. It's just yeah, like super early. Oh, like it's like, oh, so I'm excited. A lot of uh, people have been talking uh, about it. Uh, you know, me, like he's all about getting that uh, Toko Aozaki. Don't know about that. Like I said, in, um, in Mahoyo, she is the main antagonist and there are, you know, three other uh hmm, what do I want to call them characters I'll call them characters yeah who I was we, getting... we will have to see how it plays out I mean not that that you know them being a villain is is necessarily a barrier to to summoning that is kind of our thing yeah but see this is the thing that's bugging me I've been looking on Twitter and stuff no one's excited for maybe seeing Togo everyone's excited about like everyone else like it's like I have to, I have to, like I have to blow the fucking high whistle on token. I'm all like, "What is wrong with you people? Look at her, she's amazing." Oh, it's true. I do, I do kind of feel like the general tone with this is just because, um, because archetype Earth is is being added uh, this year in NA, actually a couple years ago in JP. This does kind of mean that like all of of you know Type Moon's major heroines are actually like coming together in the crossover Type Moon game now, probably. Mm-hmm. We should assume there will be some sort of servant Alco because she is kind of on the 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 cover of what we've seen for the preview. Um, that is kind of like symbolically pretty cool. I I still you know I think Toko's a neat character, so we'll, we'll we'll see what happens. I have seen some people like like I've seen like the the you know the phrase uh, Shiki trending, and I'm not sure if we're talking about Nani Shiki or you know Ryogi Shiki because I don't have time to check everything that comes on Twitter. But uh, it it is kind of funny to think about like yeah. In Tsukihime, Aoko is a major character who is, you know, supporting that that protagonist Shiki. But that would presumably be covered in some some Tsukihime related stuff. And we've got some questions about this for our mailbag later, I believe. So we can check in with a few more speculations. But yeah, uh, I'm pretty sure based on the timing, because it's the twelfth now, uh, you know, U.S. time. Uh, the Evocation Festival block ends the seventeenth. So they did say late April. But uh, so we'll see exactly when it is. But I would guess probably by next week we'll 
sorry, smack my pop filter with my nose, uh, will probably uh, know more. Like, if the event isn't straight up out, you know, by then, I would assume probably some kind of pre-release to, to tide people over as the next big thing with maybe some, some rank-ups, maybe release a bonus list, etc. I'm actually kind of curious how an event bonus list would be done. I mean, we never know what the fucking collabs. The arcade one was fucking stacked, as people are saying in our Patreon chat. So we'll, we will see what happens, but we should, by next week's show, have, like, something. Whether it's, like, a pre-release timeline with maybe some more info, or just it straight up started. So we'll get into that. Yeah. Uh, it won't matter. Sorry, I just popped my, uh, I popped Ryder Da Vinci's uh, NP up in battery early, but it won't actually matter. This note is very easy to loop. Thank you, game, for making lots of high-level nodes that have UFL casters. But yeah, that's <laughs> uh, gonna be our newsies for this week. Decently fleshed out section. We're about 30 minutes into recording. Oh, that's good. But with that, let's move on to the next segment, which is uh, Let's Talk FGO Mailbag, the segment where we read what you have to say and comment accordingly. This week, we have one last refresh. 11 lovely comments. Maybe not so much, considering this ran for two weeks. I meant to actually put a reminder for people, but I was like, you know what? Nah. Nah. Well, hey, I'm, we still got, if I'm reading the... <coughs> Sudden cough. Uh, if I'm reading the like, uh... yeah, no. Some people did get in the last minute, so that's why I was like, that's why I was like, no, we don't need to necessarily do a reannouncement. People know, people know, and I was happy. So we have eleven, and we'll get through them all, and we'll begin right now. Starting off with the Tyra King recovering after his fight with the Backstreet Boys reunion tour. Oof, oof. Question, hey guys, not with Mahoyo confirmed for the Golden Week collab and hopefully Strange Fake next year. What other Type Moon titles do you see potentially getting a collab with FGO? Also, what servant would you like to see come to FGO if one of the old collabs have a rerun? That's it, sending good vibes your way. Wah, 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 wah. And hope you have a great evening. Uh huh. I mean, I feel, I feel like the joke I have to say here is, uh, you know, just, uh, just, uh, you know, Fate Extra Record collab? Because that would imply that Fate Extra Record actually came out. Yeah, no, we still got Extra Record, but we still have Extella. Yes, Extella hasn't also got a, a formal collab. We should also not discount uh, The Adventures of El Melloy, the second, the sequel. Um, and if we're talking old reruns, oh, definitely would probably want to uh, maybe pull on uh, Prisma. Prisma has some very good characters in it that we haven't got the scene. Oh, let's see here. Yeah, the the timeline for the Prisma collab is a couple of uh, cup like one season, the kind of couple of movies behind, I think. So yeah, there's there's plenty of Prisma, not not to mention obviously lots of the manga, but there's plenty of Prisma material to cover. I know a lot of people have been thinking because there is, uh, I I believe the phrase is this probably technically should have been in um news but it's still a little loosey goosey um i i believe that there's going to be some sort of fate stay night related news because we're doing a rebroadcast of fate zero on tv i think mm-hmm. you said they're gonna rebroadcast yes. the anime um, yes this is when the um yeah. oh, go continue please i was just gonna say i, I believe fgo jp put out on like a push alert about this as well so there's probably going to be some kind of something to collaborate in fgo as well so there's like that that's a little like more nebulous, but yeah, there's still definitely some some stuff going on there. So we're we're looking forward for for newsies. Uh, I guess we could add that as well to the the official list. Is strictly speaking, there is no straight up Fate Stay Night related collaboration. We have covered Zero, uh, and we've covered some of the stuff that happens after because you know the the case files check in, but nothing has adre- directly addressed the Fate Stay Night time period. I don't know. I kind of feel like I always feel like. Singularity Zero is uh, kind of was that thing. I mean, it's obviously supposed supposed to homage, but it is true that it doesn't really like reference a lot of a lot of the plot because that also may just be in general related to the the whatever the the overarching plot of FGO is supposed to be because it was it has been mentioned a couple of times in the backstory that uh you know uh Marsbury and Solomon, you know, won a Fuyuki Grail War and uh, supposedly did it pretty easily and lots of other stuff happened. So, you know, an actual... While that does leave room, obviously, for collab stuff, because clearly that would be a separate timeline for Fate's Day Night, it is also 
probably deeply related to the lore with some things that you know we've we've discussed this never really gotten gotten deep on those details uh we we don't know what the other you know uh six servants were supposed to be for instance we know that obviously caster was was solomon but there's there's open ended questions so that that might be a little too much of a deep cut for a normal collab for a normal golden week collab anyway the samurai remnant collab was also basically a, a you know a extra story cut as well more content any other collab thoughts from you lucky not particularly so we will move on this next one comes from the king of protea cultivator spelt with a k by the way they say hey lucky and omega i hope you're both having an amazing week and are avoiding the heat Oh, well, let's see. I'm in the Pacific Northwest. We are experiencing temperate climes right now with clear sky, with clear skies, cool evenings, and cold nights. So we are a okay for now. Uh, personally, my small time in ETX, I'm assuming that means Eastern Texas. Ooh, excuse me. Is expected to get one million tourists during to the eclipse. So send me your energy if possible. That is correct. We did have a, a solar eclipse for the first time in a while, and people did lose their minds a little bit. Uh, thankfully, the planet is still here, so whatever doomsday, cold, unfathomable horrors, and unspeakable evils were all properly contained and sealed thanks to Heroes Unknown. So everyone, make sure you give them a prayer uh, when you go to bed tonight and thank them for their service. Uh, um, it may sound extreme, but this generally feels like some of the best low-key characterization and character variety I've seen in an event in a long time. The jokes land, the con are cute yet sus, and each character avoids getting flanderized so far. Uh, my question this week is, how would you rate the story and overall vibe from the current event so far? Uh, P.S. It also helps that the farming nodes are smooth as fuck. Farming has been pretty smooth. That's pretty smooth. Honestly, like if I was gonna like rate this, rate this on a ten point ten point scale, I think I put this at um a solid you know eight out of ten, a four out of five. Yeah, we're somewhere in the 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 high B low A range. Mm-hmm. It's a high quality event. Uh, doesn't really like as compared to like main story and stuff in in. FGO, it doesn't really like you know super twist on the heartstrings. Yeah, um, like and like, oh, I gotta stop saying like. I just realized you jammed a few but, in there, but that's okay. I'm I'm yeah. fucking sniffling my ass off this week, so <laughs> I'll take all the heat for terrible pauses. Anyway, continue. But but the but as um as you were saying, like there is a fuck. Sorry, I'm just hearing them now. The event story is pretty good, but it does not have any like major like twist or turns. It has a cute a few good ones, but the overall story is while entertaining and fun is a uh, is a little it is a oh what do I want to call it? I don't want to use the word repetitive because of the, the nature of it, but it is kind of repetitive. I feel like if I say repetitive here, it is it gives it a negative nuance, but I don't mean it as a negative nuance. It has a strict formula of you discover a problem you 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 approach a problem you discover a complication from the problem then you have to retreat from the problem come up with a new solution to the problem to then defeat the problem and you do this several times yeah and while i do enjoy that especially since that's what lets you get you your options to you know to build on this on this island like i said it is not the most engaging i suppose it was mostly i'm just here for like oh look at the look at the con look at him cute i was like i'm gonna build me a library yeah it's very direct and straightforward uh i don't know if i would say formulaic because uh we live in the year uh, 2024 where media literacy is dead people take usually also take formulaic as a negative despite the fact that like there have been some very great shows that have been formulaic monster of the week etc mm -hmm. but yes this is very cyclical it is structured. Strictly speaking, in a literal sense, yes, the structure does repeat, but it doesn't, like, actually repeat any content because all of your choices are different. You are encountering new threats every time. So it's not, yes. like, literally the same thing over and over again, but it does have a structure and a formula that it sticks to, and it's not really trying to do anything crazy out there. Um, if anything, like, the fact that there is a twist, which we will probably talk about later, uh, mm. like, I think we all sense there was a twist. I don't know how everybody, like, not everybody seems to have immediately grabbed the twist, but definitely there was this, you know, wig room of, like, there's definitely something else going on here, right? Right? Everybody sees that? And everybody's, everybody else is too busy petting the adorable con, and they're just like, okay, it's just me? All right, we'll come back to this. And then eventually <laughs> you do come back to it. But, yeah, it just kind of flows. But overall, like, it does a really good job, like, this, uh, this writer in, this is 
commenter left, that it hits everybody has a distinct character note, but also doesn't like super exaggerate them. Like we do have a few of Wu Zetan's gags, you know, worried about ghosts and stuff. But she has some other things to say in there, so it's not just her constantly being afraid of ghosts or cats or whatever. Lambda Rillis is still Lambda Rillis, but... Yes, ghosts and stuff. <laughs> I typed it so I wouldn't say it, but she ruined it. I said it out, but I mean, you know, we're, we're in it now. We we can only fight the stuff for so long. Even crazier space dust. <laughs> God damn it. If somehow you're watching us and haven't seen the history of everything i the history of the whole world i guess check it out you would be shocked how much we use no the sun is a deadly laser in our day-to-day life mostly because the sun is in fact a deadly laser and is trying to kill you as evidenced by all those people who had to google uh why do my eyes hurt after the eclipse (laughs) (laughs) dumbasses fools but you know relatively like i was saying lambda gets her moments and obviously keeps to her personality but also gets to be a lot more serious than she was even in her debut event, which was summer and therefore was, you know, a gag, a goof, a fun little time. And we also do a really diverse job. Like, I, at first I was kind of, you know, curious as, like, getting our representatives, our various ideas. Were they just there to be little cameos? But no, all the individual characters you drum up are actually also part of the process, and you see them again in the follow-on, uh, whether that's, like, Semiramis comes back a couple times when she becomes your chief engineer to just, <laughs> you know, whatever option you pick, actually getting a decent amount of, of characterization. And yeah, it's a lot. It's a little, you know, lighthearted. It's a little goofier. It's got the gags, but it's still it still does service the characters very well. So overall, very, a very high quality event. Like I said, there's there's no super deep emotional cuts. Um, while the kind of like reveal of Taisui as a character is is very nice. Uh, it's also super, like, sudden. Morgan literally shows up as a deus ex machina. She is a deus ex machina, but also they have been seeding her the entire freaking time. Oh, I mean, they, they foreshadowed her presence, and, like, I appreciate that it's also a punchline, right? Mm-hmm. Like, it's, it's got superb chef's kiss comedic timing. But also in the story narrative, it is a, it is kind of a deus ex machina in that, you know, we didn't know that she was around right in this moment, and she rolls up just to be like, what are you, what are you guys do, talking about? I can't pet this con in peace. I oh, you need to defeat this guy? Okay, I got you. Do some fucking magic. So yeah, like, it's it's part of the process, but yeah, it's, it's not necessarily like a, a super deep cut. There is, I think, a little bit of like, world building big thinky stuff in the end like some of you may have been wondering right at the start like hey what the fuck does a rush have to do with this event but you know they do make it pay off so that that was pretty neat to see that come back we may talk about a little more of that in detail but it is definitely like like it's i wouldn't say it's a perfect 10 out of 10 event but it's very strong the writing is very good the characters are very good it you know the 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 emotional through line is perfectly all right and it's got good yokes but it's it's you know i mean my my metric for, for story releases is, is still colored by, like, Lost Belt 6, so, like, I don't, you know, I don't know where we're ever gonna, if we're ever gonna break away from that, but, I'm trying to think, like, what, you know, standalone events, what would what, what have been, like, really, really strong? There have been a few stories that have had some really good vibes, but that that's almost like a, a separate mailbag question, so we'll, I, I'll table that one for now. We got a few more of these. Mm-hmm. So, thank you very much for that. We are going to move on. This next one comes from the Master, who is grateful to Azusa-san for drawing Fem Herc. You can't see it, but I did a very jaunty thumbs up. Azusa, killing it as always. Mm-hmm. But they say, Hello, Lucky Omega. I wanted to let you both know that Atlas posted a tweet that Unicorn has hit 500k sales within its launch month. I'm really enjoying this game so far, and I'm happy it's getting good word of mouth. Thank you for both reading, and I both you have both have a Smooth night, like jazz. But yes, I am all. I also seen that tweet, and I am very happy. I'm glad that Unicorn Overlord has gotten positive reviews, and word of mouth has gotten it over those sales numbers. Uh, <laughs> uh, Vanilla Wear will probably not go bankrupt, thankfully. Yes, they've made their money again. <laughs> They'll be able to make another game until they run out of money. No, it's fine. Uh, I'm I'm glad to see it. I know that, like, for a while, Vanillaware has been a little more obscure, and, like, there are keyboard warriors on the internet who like to, uh, 
you know, point fingers at their very their artist's very distinctive style, which is super super stylized. Oh, actually, I remember this. I remember when uh, Jason Schreier actually pointed fingers at Vanilla's character designers, um, saying that they were designed by, like, you know, oh, God, 13-year-old kids who've never seen a woman before. And they actually, uh, I believe uh, George uh, Kamitani actually sparred it with um, an image saying, uh, we will design uh, characters born to the line of Jason Schreier's of expectation through, like, three, like, burly, dwarven men just, you know, naked with pot bellies and just posted that. Yeah, hey. no, the, the Vanillaware team knows what's up. Also, I'm not sure, but this often happens, I believe, uh, happened when some of these complaints were leveled at Stellar Blade, for instance, but isn't one of the primary art designers at Vanillaware a woman? Maybe. I don't know. I don't remember. Um, I know that Stellar Blade's art team is uh, a uh, husband and wife team, I believe. So, yes. you know, that's another one of those things where, like, I don't know why Western games journalists have to take this pot shot, because guess what? Um... In Japan, professional artists are not basement dwellers. They're they're part of a, an industry process. We can address that they have their own issues with, like, you know, uh, possibly being, you know, overworked and, you know, uh, the how the, like, you know, dojin do circle is, is good. You know, like, like that's kind of a, a, a weird, sketchy business that is allowed just because the companies behind those franchises don't care kind of a thing, right? Very big legal gray area, but... um. They're they're employed as professional artists, guys. They're not they're, they're not like living and working out of a basement. And you know the team knows what's up. We all know the the incredibly hilarious stories of like Sega hiring Rita to do character design and and, and art design for Valkyria Chronicles and being like, Rita, please, you cannot draw porn of these characters, okay? You're gonna kill us. And he's just like, all right, I'm still gonna be super horny though. <laughs> But also, Raida also draws tanks very well. He's he's good. But like I said, I don't know. Like, it, like I said, it, this is the only time we've taken this cheap shot, and almost always it blows up in your face. Stop it. Get some new material. Just in general. But uh, yeah. So I'm I'm also very glad to see like uh, I'm gonna guess based on our previous conversations and what I myself have seen, uh, as I now own and am playing Unicorn Overlord. Uh, I was a little worried, but no, that I I had to triple check Amazon, but it was still on sale, so we picked it up this week. Uh, I'll talk more about it later, but as I had some previous discussions with Lucky as well, story-wise, that one's probably not gonna, like, shake and wow me. Um, it's probably not going to, uh, you know, uh, put some new wrinkles in my brain like 13 Sentinels, but 13 Sentinels did have a little bit of a long tail to get going. Uh, I know that they did actually hit some pretty big sales milestones, like, in kind of, like, lifetime sales, but it took a while to cook, right? Right. Like, it took them a little while to, to, to build up and, and get through all that. But uh, it seems like Unicorn Overlord, with its uh, demo release and just building up, uh, is having a very strong showing sales-wise, which is crazy because the past couple of months have been fucking huge for video games, right? Uh, Helldivers 2 is number one on Steam right now. Like, like um, it's, it's over uh, CSGO, even. Uh, while it is no longer super high up there, you know, Pal World was an amazing breakout as well, top of the charts. Uh, you know, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is getting super great critical reception, you know, very uh, well-selling in terms of uh, PS5 games, which is still kind of like, a uh, honestly, a relatively narrow margin. You know, um, lots, of, lots of critical praise heaped on Dragon's Dogma. I know that that one's been a little more controversial with the gamers, but... It's still, in general, people have been really enjoying it, uh, and stuff keeps going. Also, you know, to talk about FF7's uh, cultural power, I uh, have received knowledge from Twitter that uh, the the soundtrack is out. Uh, I don't think they're posting it on like Screen It's Music or anything yet, uh, but it's it's uh, available for sale. Uh, and the FF7 Rebirth soundtrack, which is like eight discs long, is number one on the iTunes store. Uh, that means that it is defeating Beyonce currently, which is pretty <laughs> wild, at least on iTunes, but still. I know that's only one market, but, you know, also chat, chat, don't, the, th I, I understand that we're, uh, we are literally doomed to, to be in the discourse about, uh, Last of Us 2 forever, but we don't, we don't, we don't need this in, in the Patreon chat. There's a couple of games that will forever have discourse. I, I joked to someone the other, uh, day talking about, cause, you know, uh, P3 Fez also came out and hit some, uh, record numbers for Atlas as well, you know, this year. Um, and talking about, like, we've got our vibes. Uh, I believe it has been uh, semi-leaked slash formally announced that uh, P6's color palette will be green, 
mostly everybody seems to have predicted this, but you know, there's been some some form of official confirmation from from some in the know people. Um, but I I there's as always more waves of discussion about stuff, and I joke that we're gonna be stuck in uh uh Persona Four discourse literally forever because by the time you know you think the discourse would die down naturally, they're gonna remake Persona Four, and we're just gonna be here forever. It's like shipping discourse in Final Fantasy VII. Just when you think it's fucking over, it's not. But yeah, um, Unicorn Overload. Uh, great news to hear. We'll see mm-hmm. uh, where 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 they're going and what they're doing. But you know, good luck to them. They're they're killing it. Gameplay wise, very well received. We got a little in the weeds there, so I have nothing further to add on that one. Not all the links in this work, but I found this, and it's just like wow. Yeah, Schreier's all right. I I appreciate his ability to like get in the community and the journalism, but also like some people hold him up as like. I don't know, the, the, the fucking rock star of the video game journalism world. And it's like, ah, that's not quite right either. You know, the obviously on the one hand, it's like, okay, well, you know, you couldn't like break stories because then nobody would talk to you. But like, I- I've always taken to heart that he tweeted out, unabashedly tweeted out, oh yes, I've heard a lot of rumors about Blizzard over the years and we're finally getting confirmation. And I'm like, oh, so you've heard these stories, but never talked about them ever. Like, uh, you know, everybody's got their own shit. Ooh. Hang on one second. My computer is being a little weird. Yeah, I'm blubbering a bit. <laughs> Sorry, I was scrolling Twitter and I just saw a picture from Helldivers updates, which has the uh, the Trailblazer helmet, and I'm pretty sure it's it's pulled from the subreddit. But it's like, what's the deal with this helmet? Why do so many people wear it? And I'm just like, because they know that's the the helmet that uh, the Luxor prefers. But it's uh like. I think it's just because it's got a hood. It's like like a hood helmet. <laughs> yeah, no. I mean, I, re- I run the Trailblazer like myself. Yeah, like I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's why why people go for yeah. it because it's got a very distinct, specific look. Yeah, hood. Hood is cool. Hood is great. More hood. Also, by the way, you're saying like I laughed out or blacklisted? Maybe sued? N- no, that's. It's very hard to sue journalists for reporting things. You have to uh to to prove slander. You have to like prove malicious intent, which is super hard to do in a court of law. It's very easy to argue that you were just uh, mis- mistaken or got an impression from somebody. That's not true in other jurisdictions, but it is in America. But all right. Sorry. I'm all right. Just... So let's get back to this. Okay. So we're going. We're going. So this next one comes from the Eternal Storm. Question. With the debut of Aqua uh, Uoga Marie, uh, do you think FGO is leading up to a Uoga Marie as an anniversary character for 2024? Uh, take care and wish me well on interviewing. Good luck. Well, good luck for you. Uh, ah, that's what everybody said last year, and look where we are. No, I'm pretty sure you still got more um Olga Marie's to punch, so probably not this year. No. Are there gonna be? Th- are we gonna have five five Olgas? Is there an Olga of every element? Is there an nah. Avatar Olga? Listen, I remember Element to Irie, so yeah, no, that's what I'm going for. Though I'm also now imagining a parody of the Avatar opening, but whenever we list the elements, it's just a different Olga Mary. Whatever happened to fanatical racism? But, <clears throat> excuse me there, let us keep moving on. This next one comes from With Many Thanks. They say, hey, Lucky Omega, last week I wrote in as Lucky to save my poor rolling experience in his trademark exasperated way. I got to say thank you from my bottom of my heart because it absolutely made my week. Sending you. And Omega, good vibes and happy rolls. Wah, 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 wah. I am still slightly fabricated that me being talking exasperated is something I'm known for. I do not, I do not comprehend this fully. I mean, it's not conscious and, you know, you should get self-conscious about it. But, I, I you know, we talked about this on, on the, the show when we did it. I, I, I think you have a certain, certain uh, cadence and tone when you're you're reading out your uh, terrible, no good, very bad rolling experience. <laughs> you you have a way with things. Make the people to feel. The feel. Feel and stuff. Feels and See, stuff. Now, now I'm just gonna do it now. You can't stop me now. You You've crazy your space feels. <laughs> no, space feels. No. Uh, we're getting out of here. <sighs> By the way, we've been, we have managed to record this show for, for about an hour. We're in like 5936. We're schmoovin'. We're going. This is what happens when you bottle us up for two episodes we're, or two weeks. We're coming back. We're juiced. I've been to the juice center, baby. How are people doing this like bigger texting in Discord now? Oh, yeah, actually. Uh, 
Listen, Lucky is a person who auto counts for cool, but I would love to be able to get some big techs in there. Yeah, I don't I don't actually know what the markup for would that be font size up? Oh. Ooh. Pound sign. Okay, very good. Take you to Pound Town. There we go. Johnny Kaku, let us move on. This next one comes from Peko Mama Aficionado. Good choice. Like I said, I know it's their April Fool's uh, joke for Pekora, but mm, the internet has run away with this. Yeah, the internet's not okay. The internet is not okay. You cannot you cannot say they like Peko Mama a reasonable amount. No. I'm 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 on Twitter. I know what's up. <laughs> Neat. Oh, thank you, Legendary. Legendary in our uh, Patreon now talking about how the new Discord function to modify your font size works. But this person says, Dear Lucky Omega, no questions this week, just sending good vibes. Wah, 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 wah. And wishing you well. Keep up the great work. Thank you. Thank you very much. We're going to move on, though, and this next one comes from Helldiver Cadet Crow. They say, good evening, Logan Omega. I got Helldivers 2 this pack week, and I'm loving it, but I would like some advice on what I should be trying to progress towards. Any advice would be appreciated. Good vibes to the both of you. Wah, 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 wah. Oh, man. I mean, I would just point to, like, those, you know, trendy web articles that say, 10 things you should know before jumping into Helldivers 2. Because, unfortunate, unfortunately, unfortunately, I say it in triplicate because it is that unfortunate. When I jumped into Helldivers 2, I just kind of, like, went ass first into doing it and i just learned as i go and i'm not entirely sure to uh, regurgitate that experience into something that you would find useful yeah Uh, we just kind of like all of us kind of just like threw in you know whole hog like i i I like you know uh am occasionally uh fed helldiver stuff by like twitter algorithms and i've like poked the subreddit most of the things i know are just pure trial and error yeah like so uh right off the bat i guess i should mention this the loadout that you will you will not have a universal loadout um bugs and bots are completely different types of enemies and you should have different loadouts for both like with uh bots i i i'm kind of i guess i'm kind of what one could call the heavy of the group Believe it or not, um, I usually have the least amount of kills in our team. Not because I'm not doing stuff. No, I usually carry things like rocket pods, the rail cannon strike, the spear, and usually I'll carry like something for a uh, small ground clearing, like cluster, like cluster bombs or um, maybe a turret if we might do some defensive objectives. Um, I get so few kills though because I am an objective doer. Um, I will be sitting on the top of a hill, taking out cannons from 300 meters away, trying to get that um, lock on a fab. I'll be the one at the terminal pushing buttons. Um, I am the one who usually um, tries to take out the first of a big enemy, like tanks, hulks, um, gunships. Usually I'm the one taking those out while Omega and Loth are usually running around dealing with a bunch of little guys. Usually getting chainsawed by berserkers because boy, howdy, those boys so are fucking HP. janky. They have so, so much HP. HP. They li- literally nothing. You-, you can't kill them in like one mag of anything except maybe the new exploding rifle. But even then, they take two shots of that. It's fucking horseshit. But yeah, uh, and oh, I'll-, I'll say this because I've done... I think, as evidenced by my super credit and warbond count, uh, I've done the most soloing to just, you know, do a lot of low-level currency farming. What you do to survive solo at lower difficulties, or even higher difficulties, is very different than what you do as part of a squad. Uh, we do yeah. a lot of Helldivers players on, on the Discord if you want to get involved in some stuff. But uh, th- there's definitely a different sort of, like, selection there. Uh, when you're with a team, it's generally good to spread out a little. Like, some redundancy isn't bad. Like, if we're doing, like, uh, you know, Blitz Automatons, uh, two people with spears so you can just shoot Fabbers that much faster. That's good. That's good. You know, you're not, you're not actually overlapping. You're just doing the objective faster. Outside of that, while we should have multiple ways to kill Fabbers, we don't really need to bring two spears because, you know, what, one spear well-fed is enough to eliminate most targets, and then when it's being weird, we can just do other stuff. Yeah. Like, what I usually do in our in our ongoing automaton campaign, because the, the game has been very bots-focused, today's uh, daily mission is literally kill 400 automatons. Jesus. Yeah, I did, like, 200 of that earlier before I was like, I want to play some Unicorn Overlord. We'll see what we're doing while the show is rendering, maybe. I don't know what Loth's up to. But, um, 
like that I usually end up taking more stuff leaning towards trash clears. Like I I've gotten uh pretty good at throwing uh orbital airburst, uh which orbital airburst is a very good strategy if you want to do trash clears, has a relatively low uh, clearance time, it fires like three rounds. So it's pretty good at, at mopping up several guys over a over a tight area kind of a thing. And your teammates when it's off by three feet. Yes, I will warn you. The gunners <laughs> sometimes they're a little slozzled, and uh, you got to watch your angles because sometimes those those it's an air burst, so it'll burst in weird ways. Uh, I remember fucking last night, I deliberately went back down a hill to to get out of range, and somehow only I exploded. You guys on like the crest of the hill, fine. Me obliterated. <laughs> um, uh, I'll also I've I've really caught on to taking the orbital laser as like a big oh shit button, just like. Hey, there's a lot of guys, and some of them are tough out there. Let's just fuck up a lot of guys with a giant laser, you know? Um, while you're still starting out, like, until you get to, like, level 20-ish, you're going to not be able to access every stratagem anyway, so you're probably going to want to focus on unlocking stuff as you are able to. Um, but in general, like, find... I guess the best way is just find stuff that works for you. Uh, I personally have gotten pretty comfortable with the uh, the Diligence Counter Sniper, but I know that, like, Lucky and uh, especially Loth, we're not the hugest fans of how it handled. I just kind of used it enough to get to get used to it, even though I do think it still has some some squiggles. So that's like a thing of just like different people like different guns. Uh, the only thing I would like actively steer you against is that, despite the devs trying really hard to make it work, there are some like back end bugs with the way fire works and damage over time affects enemies that. Uh, I, I cannot necessarily recommend those weapons, even though the developers would really like you to use them, because apparently people aren't picking them. But that seems to be because the burning damage is inconsistent uh, for enemies. Uh, it's very consistent for you, because it fucking kills you. Uh, which sucks, because uh, we have bot Hellmire now, um, and uh, just like regular Hellmire, it's super cool that you can get mobbed by fire tornadoes on fucking Extract, you know, when you can't legally go away. You're not allowed to leave, so it's cool that they're there. <laughs> Seriously, I can't fucking land on a Stratum Jammer or an Eye of Sauron Tower with my Hell Pod, but the fire tornadoes can just come into my extract? What the fuck is this? Huh? Huh? Uh, well, the Steam animation, I feel like they also debuffed that, so yeah, it's 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 real bad. Um, I have heard, though, that you can put yourself out off, um, put out the fire debuff by diving. If you can dive in time. Yeah, I don't know. it's just, it's, they've amped up the burning damage so much that it's not, like, it's so fast that you die. You almost always have to be pre-stimming. Uh, and I, uh, literally today, um, I burned through an entire stim. It was a fire tornado, so I was, there was literally nowhere on the extract zone that wasn't on fire. So I had to pop a second stim as I started dying again. Like, it's... It's a little unbalanced. It's it's working. There's also been some graphical glitches with the latest uh, latest patch. Uh, so like there's still there's still some rough spots, and I think there's some cases where the developers maybe have an idea of what should be tougher, um, and that doesn't line up with what the players think is doable. Uh, sometimes it's because there are freaks who will do everything on uh, nine, but also like um, the Static defense m m missions, the extract all civilians, uh, still suck. They still suck ass. Uh, Loth and I were literally run out of town doing, like, one at, like, four last night. Uh, it was not physically possible to deal with, uh, nine million berserkers and multiple hulks on spawn with the weapons we spawned with, with just two people. Uh, it was just not possible. So we died. Um... And if the game is data-driven, I'm hoping that all these, uh, meat saws I'm getting killed by are, like, tweaking the developer's neurons to realize that maybe uh, Berserkers have an uh, improportionate kill rate for their level of difficulty. They are literally, like, the the like third easiest to spawn bot, I think. I don't know if, if uh, Berserkers come before Rocket Troopers or not, but um, they're pretty low on the totem pole, and they have a very high kill rate for uh, where, where they're at in that. But yeah, like I said, m most of my advice is just, just to play stuff and feel it out. Um, do not feel... The need to go all in on, like, higher difficulties. Obviously, doing higher difficulties will unlock later, so you can get access to better samples and obviously more proportional rewards. But feel, feel free to take take small slices and, like, just farm a little currency so you can get ahead and, and try out new shit. Uh, just, you know, uh, don't be afraid to keep trying. 
uh, how, how does the tooltip go? Uh, if at first you don't succeed, dive again, and then and dive again. again, and again, and again. And I don't actually know how, how many times it repeats, but it's a lot. We, uh, I think we've gotten most of the network issues ironed out. We should probably stream Helldivers at some point, just to show the people what the fuck we're dealing with. But probably. We'll figure that out at a later date. I think Rubik's Raptor had a, had a hell, no video, but a Helldivers stream today. Uh, which, if that archive is public, I will probably poke it, just because those those guys in Ignis are always crazy. Uh, I we, love them to death. We, we've we've had some moments of 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 just being like, well, you know, if my friends die, my friends die. Uh, but th- <laughs> those guys practically make it to a science. But yes, uh, other than other than there's currently fire is bugged. I don't, I don't actually have a lot of solid advice for hell You just gotta vibe, man. So, moving on, this next one comes from a master slowly going mad with post production on Noxious Blockbuster, Jurassic Park, Lost Belt of Spiders and Bats. Man, yeah, we're less than a year away. Wild. But they say, hey guys, hope you're both doing good. With the arrival of anniversary slowly creeping up on us, what quality of life changes would you like to see? I'd like to see proper support for other dots and games, like Honey Lake did for bird strategies. Sending you the good vibes and have fun with your future love child with Morgan or whatever he ends up being from this event. It is kind of a love child now that I think about it. Wild. He's a funny little guy. I adore him. Oh god, like, he he makes me think of um the... Oh, what was it? How do you say it? Uh, Rush- Rush- Rochelle? Rochelle? There's a TV tropes about it. Uh, Rochelle was right or something like that. Oh, yeah. Rossi- I, th- I think it's Rochelle. Rochelle? Yeah, French philosopher. Yeah, French philosopher. Um, talking about how... Um, e- oh, I can't... I can never fully explain the fucking um, philosophy behind it, but it has a lot to do with um, concepts of ev- uh, concept of evils against innocence. And it's just like... Uh, it's stuff I like to write my brain out, but that's not what we're talking about here. They're talking about future quality of life they'd like to see. And believe it or not, I did actually remember what the ones I was thinking about like a few weeks ago that I accidentally forgot. I remembered them. Good job, Lucky. So, 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 what I would like is I would like it so that, uh, first off, these are all Noble Phantasm related. They're all, like, I got, cause I got three of them. First off, um, when you use a noble phantasm, I wish it like a quality of life is it only took off the 100, 200, or 300. Like, if you got like 151%, it only took, left you like 51%. Like, that's something I would like. Uh, because again, this is a game that is basically become predicated on firing your noble phantasm like, um, quick and as quickly and as often as possible. So, I would like that. The second thing I think, I think this is actually a more interesting one. I think that you should be able to activate your Noble Phantasm card at any point, even if you don't have the full charge, because there's been plenty of times where you've been able to, you can usually get that 100% charge, like, in, like, the first two cards, and then maybe you you can, like, just, like, like, preemptively select the Noble Phantasm and then fire it. Like, I think that would be pretty cool. So, like, say you have, like, 90%, and you have, like, two Arts cards, you can hit those two Arts cards, and then hit that 100%, and on the third card, you file the Noble Phantasm, and it's great, too, because if, like, if something goes weird and you don't actually get the 100% and you try to fire up your car, well, it's a fucking dud and you lose that card. Right? And you lose that thing. And you, you've become suboptimal. Yes, and I know, you know some um, diehard players out there have just fainted with just the thought of it. And uh, thirdly, something I would like, I would like that if you do do a Noble Phantasm and you do kill the enemy, but you have, like... Like, I'm me, I'm kind of weird. I'll just, like, I still, like, do, like, set up chains and stuff after the enemy is dead. But if you be- kill them with the um, Noble Phantasm, I wish that you would still get to finish out your attack chain to get the extra attack so you can get all that extra um, NP and uh, crit stars back. Because I always feel like that's a waste. So it's all like, well, I killed them, and now we're just going to move on to the next one because I guess we don't, like, chain on, keep chaining. So, yes, I would, like... I would like I would like more options. I would like more fun stuff to do with like setting up NPs and NP chains and stuff like that. Yes. Yep, that's all some very interesting stuff. I definitely think that like maybe that is like an all time mechanic, but that could be a very interesting gimmick. A, a servant who can like fire their NP if they reach a hundred percent charge. Because we we do have a couple of servants who have some very interesting timing to actually activate their NP animatics, like Bazet, for instance. You know, the actual like you just do the buff and then it actually fires as part of the thing, but. There's definitely some fun there. Oh, yes. Also, I think um, talking about like being able to to, buh, 
uh, level up all your skills all at once. Uh, that's what Patreon Chat is suggesting. That would probably be pretty nice. There are a lot of screens to click through to level level up skills. Um, and they 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 kind of made it easier with ascension and leveling up because you can switch back and forth between those two menus. But with skills, it's definitely just like click click click. Okay, we're good. Click click click. Okay, we're good. Shit, I don't have enough of that mat. Got to go back. I get me one. Could be interesting to see. Sorry, I'm just stretching my neck. Yep. So, oh, ow, 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 ow. I just had to stretch, and I just pop, and I just pop something there. I'm too old for this. So this next one comes from Master Catching Monkey Things? Question mark? But they say, howdy, Lucky New Mega. Hope you all are enjoying the event. And, and just a short question this week. Now with the release of the count, the proper fictional character, what other servants would you like to see based off of fictional, semi-fictional literature? I, for one, still like to see Dracula as a servant. Vlad is cool, but Zucker Vlad is very clear about not being or really liking the Dracula stuff. So I want to see a servant that goes full in on it. I mean, that is fair. Because we got, we got we got Vlad the Impaler, then we got, you know, Vlad, and then there's Dracula. Yeah. Because Vlad the Impaler is the historical one, and then um, Vlad as Dracula is, like, the the people's, like, um, inter- like reimagining of Vlad as Dracula, and then there's actual fucking Dracula. Yeah, because, so. you know, Dra- uh, Dracula from Bram Stoker's novel is not supposed to be Vlad Dracula. Yeah. He's a different guy. He's just similar. Um, yeah. that definitely, I think that Dracula would be a good one just because like, obviously Nasuverse has such complicated vampire lore anyway, which also isn't afraid to contradict itself. See Carmilla, who's just like, I feel like Carmilla as a servant was written deliberately to just be like, we are not fucking with Nasuverse vampire lore. We're just letting you have an Elizabeth Bathory who's, uh, actually a vampire lady because we know you were expecting that. Um. But uh, there's a lot going on with, what do I say? It's not quite metafiction, but just the vibes of Bram Stoker's original novel are very hard to encapsulate if you've never exactly read it. it a lot of it is uh, what we call, uh, and this is a great word that I love, but a lot of Dracula is what is called epistolary. Uh, it is written in the format of uh, letters and, and diary entries, which are being sent back and forth between characters. So it's all from like a, specific perspective of, like, writing down your thoughts and recalling them later or explaining things to people. Like, the intro is, you know, Jonathan Harker writing down in his diary to the idea that he's going to send it back to his fiance Wilhelmina. Uh, this means that a lot of, like, future follow-up writers have done a lot of very interesting things with, like, well, so if Dracula is phrased in the format of letters and diary entries, that means that Dracula was real. Um, and since fate likes to play around with those things, that is a theme with this event we're actually going to talk about later. Um, like, uh, there's, you know, absolutely room for a lot of, uh, you know, really cool stuff to do with that. Also a lot of cool stuff to do with, you know, uh, Van Helsing, the Harkers, etc. There's some very fun characters. Just, uh... I don't don't do Quincy Morris just because I don't think anybody can properly replicate how un Texan that man sounds, even though he's supposed to be from Texas, because I'm pretty sure Bram Stoker never met a Texan in his life. <laughs> it, it's his dialogue is so weird. But yeah, no, there's a lot of fun there. Dracula would be a very good one. I also think that like you know, we did get two two different Moriarty's for our own weirdness, but this is something that like, with regular Sherlock we don't really tackle that like Sherlock Holmes the servant is straight up like am I real am I fake who knows who cares get me some drugs to your wine bar but there is like also very popular um with uh the uh Holmes canon is the concept of the literary agent hypothesis dropping another trope name that like because those are all supposed to be Dr. Watson's, like, case files, right? His recollections of working with Holmes. That, you know, that was just published through Arthur Conan Doyle as their literary agent kind of a thing. So, like, is is Sherlock supposed to be a, you know, canonical character who existed in the universe? Uh, because, you know, uh, it sure seems like he should be interrelated to, like, characters like Helena and etc. 
Um, or is he the the fictional guy that uh, Arthur Conan Doyle, you know, talked about? There's a lot of these characters that are very interesting. Um, this is, uh, since I believe this was a uh, quality of life that um, uh, went live recently in JP, it will be getting eventually, but they made it say that you can uh, check attributes in-game now. Uh, they're, like, listed on servant profiles more easily, and uh, you can actually, like, check them in the status menu. Uh, this is the difference between man and earth attribute servants. Earth are uh, folklore fiction and uh, myth, and man is supposed to be historical fact. Uh, I do believe that is actually, I mentioned this before, but that is the difference between uh, Edmond Dantes and the Count of Monte Cristo Cavern King. Uh, our new guy is Earth, the uh, previous Dantes was man, so it's like, what one guy is the guy who's supposed to be real in history, and was actually that bullshit, by the way. Dantes' <laughs> in-universe lore is crazy. He, he fucking fought Roa with, you know, fire, fire punches. Um, that's canon. But also the the myth of the Count of Monte Cristo and the novel is like super widespread. Also, I know you know we're still counting on that strange fate crossover and stuff, and I'm hoping for it. Can we get fucking Dumas in here, Alexandre Dumas? He's a great guy. He's pretty cool. I'd love to see how he fits in with all the rest of the team. Judge D is also that's a very uh, somebody in in, in uh, Patriot Chef brought that up. Yeah, uh, he is like a a very strong archetype of like. I think one of the first concepts of basically detective fiction ever, um, a, a historical character operating in, you know, dynastic China doing magistrate stuff. It's a very interesting, interesting story. So, yeah, there's a, there, y'all know me. I love this, this interplay. In case you can't tell by how much I'm gushing about it, I love this interplay of, like, fiction and reality. There's so much stuff in there. Oh, uh, but let's see here. The question was... Oh. Fictional uh, characters? Yeah. Oh god! Like I feel like it would, they would need some history or weight to it. Um, no, you know, actually, no, I do know who I would want. Uh, I'm gonna pull. I'm gonna pull someone from uh, Shakespeare, and I only got into it because of Gundam. But fucking Prospero from The Tempest, fucking uh, wizard ass, ma- wizard ass man, wizarding people. The I think that'd be pretty is a very cool. interesting narrative. It's true. Yeah. Um, but well, like, and, you know, uh, we've. It wouldn't be the first time we've gotten in there somewhere. I mean, like, uh, we discussed this at length in the past, but uh, Oberon is a very, uh, while he did have some, like, folkloric myths from, like, France a little before the Shakespeare time, like, most of that was Shakespearean era to actually do Fairy King Oberon. Uh, And, of course, uh, Titania is entirely a Shakespearean creation for Midsummer Night. You know, like, I think I can, like, off the top of my head, I think it would mostly be, like, Shakespeare characters that I want to see. Like, maybe get Macbeth in there. I don't know, maybe not Hamlet, but I think Macbeth, Macbeth could be in there. Uh... I'm, pretty, I'm pretty sure, in the in the context, speaking of like how this, this goes together, in the context of <laughs> Shakespeare's plays, I'm fairly certain that like the story of Macbeth is supposed to be like, it's not actually historical fiction, but it's supposed to be a pastiche of like his historical plays. Mm-hmm. Uh, in order to, like, you know, gas up the current monarch. Uh, so it, it has similarities with his works that are supposed to be historical. Uh, so that that's some interesting overlap, for sure, about kind of, you know, a, a, a semi-mythic uh, line of Scottish kings. Also, in general, give me some more, give me some more Scots shit. We don't, we don't, other than that te- technically Skahawk is actually from the region that would be Scotland in Irish mythology, we don't, we don't get a lot of the, the, the upper echelon Scots in there. They've got their own stuff going on. I know that at least one of those like uh, submissions to uh, that like great big contest for fan servant ideas was uh, Mary Queen of Scots, but that was just so the person who wrote that in could do a JoJo reference. <laughs> That's right. Somebody said they what uh, Tarukas and Blueford in Fate Stay Night. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just thinking of like we're talking about Dracula and stuff, and I'm just like you know uh, co- coming soon uh, SSR Jonathan Joestar. He's dead. Oh, <laughs> that's true. Uh, I wonder if Nasu's ever said anything about JoJo. I do not know, actually. But let's keep moving on here. Yep. This next one comes from Agent Four One Eight, saying, "Hello, Lucky and Omega. Have a good weekend, y'all. Thanks. Same to you." Yeah. And last but not least, this one comes from. Not sure if I made the mailbag, but whatever. If I didn't, they just say. No question. Just gonna say, eat unhealthy food between healthy food so you don't go crazy on bland nibbles. 
See, Lucky read this and uh, and uh, did the exact opposite. And I have been eating very little healthy. I've been eating too many healthy, too too much unhealthy food, and not enough healthy food. I have gained weight again. Still. I cry. Get some apples. I was like, hey, I blame- guess what? Joke's on you. You made it and also would have made it. Actually, I don't know if you would have made it exactly. It says six days ago, so maybe not. Maybe that would have been Saturday. But you made it anyway because of the delay. Ha-ha. <laughs> but that's it for Mailbag. Woo. Mailbag. Well, uh, that means it's time to move into Caldea Free Talk. Uh, I'm not entirely sure if I wrote Water Monster Blurbo in the notes. Uh, that that may have been once upon a fever dream, but yeah, let's talk about Water Monster Crisis a little little more in depth. We, we've bounced back and forth between a few things, but uh, I do think there are actually some some very strong points there. But overall, uh, also hey, by the way, spoilers. I think I said that earlier when we gave the general spoiler warning. But also hey, if you're not done with the story, we're probably going to talk by the end of the story. But yeah, um, overall this event's very good. Uh, I really see. Speaking about you know not making statements. I do kind of see now what he meant by he thought it was the most interesting uh, ev- event of the year. Mm-hmm. Uh, like this this period from, you know, I think uh, like front of this year to, to the end. It's interesting, I think, is the right word. There's a lot of fun stuff going on, like both both new content and also callbacks. You know, um, many of the, the options you can build are, are references to earlier stuff. You know, you bust out the Roma crew if you want to build a Legion armor. You know, talk about uh, Leonidas training with spears if you do spears. Uh, obviously, if you go with the high-speed supercars, you know, Carmilla comes back for car stuff. Your video game group comes back. But there's also, like, brand new stuff. I I don't know why Amakusa suggests pile bunkers other than they're cool. But he does. I mean, yeah, and they're, they're cool. cool. I, I, I guess in the, the Phantom Thief event, he did kind of have a, a little bit of a rule of cool streak. So it's not out of character, it's just like you kind know, of wild thing. Uh I think that the uh the Trunk sisters are very well handled. Like uh, if you want to like talk in the like slightly cynical capitalist capitalistic sense about the event, usually events that come with limited character banners are intended to sell you on those characters and rolling on those banners. Um obviously I'm very good at not rolling on banners. I'm pretty good at saving. Uh and mechanically We've talked about this before. The sisters aren't a like super unique unit. I do already have NP two Dioscuri, so it's not like a huge deal for me. My arts pulls have gone fucking nuts previously, so you know I I got my uh, Lambda Rillis and was content to stop throwing tickets. But they do get a very good introduction to kind of like uh, talk about everything. No, they come back. It's just uh, they've only come back in like anniversary banners in the the great big mashup before. Uh, I'm going to guess that means they will probably get tacked onto some other event uh, this year or will also show up at this year's anniversary in JP. But yeah, they, they do actually come back, but they're a pretty rare banner. Uh, which honestly is like, that's the thing, right? Um, I've, I've mentioned this, this off the show before, but it's definitely time to talk about this. I was always under the impression that this event and these characters were not super well received. Yeah, same. Like, I don't, I can't, like, point to exact posts or, like, you know, you know, whether on, like, Twitter or Reddit or whatever, or comments on our own Discord where, like, people explicitly express that opinion, but I feel like people didn't really talk about this event after it was over. Um, the sisters obviously are not, like, super in demand. Nobody was complaining that they don't really get a lot of rerun banners. Um, you know, I... I don't know how uh, intense it is out there. I know that there was a lot of confusion about uh, Tai Sui Junjun as a character, which honestly I also kind of still feel um, that it 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 feels a little bit more like uh, like an excuse, you know, that we we have like some sort of very obscure mythological reason for this guy to show up, uh, but it doesn't matter because he he is you know. Uh, five cons and a trench coat, and that's all we need. It is all we need. You know, with his little ribbon. That's great. That's all we need. Um, but, I mean, and I, I remember, because some people dug it up, even in when this event was coming out, Nas, we talked about it in the interviews after, where, like, as as a writing, like, challenge, the idea of, like, usually the welfare is one of the reasons to play an event, right? Right. We're sold on these these events for the welfares. When they launched Water Monster Crisis, they didn't explain the welfare at all. 
they just said that if you complete the event, there would be a welfare. So on the one hand, I think there was a lot of anticipation and mystery, and maybe in the English-speaking fan base, that led to a lot of confusion, because without you reading the kind of, like, line-by-line, like, follow-up to what the story is, this guy showing up at the end is just like, well, who the fuck is this guy? This is why you shouldn't skip story, because you have absolutely no context for this kid otherwise. Um, so, like, as a character, he's fun. It's just, I, I feel like people did not vibe with it correctly, which is weird, because this event is really good. Um, Lucky, you said your 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 full line uh, when we did Power Watch Simulator on Monday, so if you don't want to repeat yourself uh, line for line, you don't have to, but, like, yeah, you know. We're both very strongly uh, out here, being like, this event's good. No, this event's good. Um, Everyone who's thought this event was good, I need you to come kneel before so I can take your heads because clearly you're not using them and I can use more lawn decorations. Yeah, no, it's... Yeah, hell these say, everybody. It's... So, yeah, like, this is one of those cases where I had very, like, neutral expectations. I don't think I had, like, low expectations per se because we've talked about this, you know, the number of FGO events that are actually, like, straight up bad are pretty narrow and are limited to, you know, mostly in that first year or so of the game. Um, you know, uh, Saber Wars was was very much a slog. Uh, the plot for Journey to the West was very funny, but the way they, like, split the drops in CEs was really weird and they'd never done it again. Um, those of you who are real old schools, our very first actual, like, limited time event, the Moon Viewing Festival... The drops were so ass backwards that you actually got better farming running the five AP node rather than like the the twenty or forty AP node. You know, wolves for days. So many. I I cruised off those blue saber gems for for like literally a year. So like, and by the way, I also want to say about about saber wars. I got pushback back in the day. I still remember this. I talked about this on like the subreddit when it first came out of just like how much of a pain in the ass that event was because I just like. I'd only rolled, like, a couple of sabers, which were very high rarity units, and people were just like, man, eh, whatever, you just didn't roll well enough. I'm like, no, that sucks. That sucks as event construction. That's bad, actually. It's why I don't think they've done that ever again, of done, like, a, a only one class as a bonus servant thing. It was dumb, and it didn't work. They were very experimental, but yeah. So, like, obviously I don't think I had low expectations of this event, but I had very neutral expectations, and I was very pleasantly surprised by just how good this is overall. Uh, the, the plot stuff, like, I knew that the final boss was called Dagon because I did, you know, a little pregame and I looked at all the, like, boss stats. But obviously, I'm not, like, seeing most of that with context, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, so, I was kind of curious of, like, oh, how are, how are they gonna work Dagon into this? And, uh, they did probably the most interesting thing, because if you guys don't know this, um, the way this event presents it is absolutely correct. The name Dagon is applied to, like, an ancient Mesopotamian god of, like, uh, you know, grain and fish. Like, he's a, he's a, a, a fertility and, and plenty deity. Um, god of prosperity. Yes. Uh, now, he was usually, the, the, or at least the guy we assume to be Dagon, was depicted as, like, half man, half fish. In very much a, like, mermaid way, I'm pretty sure. If I'm remembering the, the sculptures correctly. But, like, that was the kind of thing that pulp writers like H.P. Lovecraft, like took in the cosmic horror direction and turned him into a freaky fish guy, uh, which is how physically he appears in the event. Yeah, they turn him into um, a fish god. Yes, a god of fish. And again, specifically in the Lovecraft canon, which is also very popular in Japan, uh, Dagon is the god of all the deep ones. He is the, the oldest and strongest, deepest guy, second only to the big sea, and sometimes Mother Hydra. Uh, so, like, using the way that Fate thinks about, uh, you know, heroic spirits, divine spirits, and how people uh, re- record them of like, yeah, I don't know. If I was Dagon and I used to be a pretty widely worshipped guy because of how generous and cool I was, and then later humans got confused and thought of me as a freaky fish guy, I might be a little nettled, you know? Yeah. Uh, so, like, that's a really interesting comment. Um, and then we get into, like, super obscure, um, you know, more more Chinese mysticism with the, the, the Tai Sui thing, um, you know, talking about the, the, the idea of, like, <sighs> it's, it's a little hard to explain, but, like, the concept of, like, counterpoint stars and, like, 
uh, you know, opposite images. Like, you've probably heard in Pulp Fiction the idea of, like, you know, Mirror Earth or, like, the, the, the Shadow Earth that, like, oh, there could be an Earth that's exactly opposite us in its orbit, so it's always behind the sun, so we could never see it. Um, like, the the concept of Taisui is supposed to be like that. It's like the star that is always opposite Jupiter, which means that it is often, like, hidden under the Earth and then being, like, deified. And it's just like, man, that's weird. That's a that's a weird concept to be like, oh yeah, I guess there's got to be a, a negastar. Um, and, you know, governing, like, bad omens, curses, and everything. And then there's the, like, the map reveal was great, by the way. Oh, yeah, no. Um, but, like, the the uh, idea of, of, like, the going to the, the, the goopy flesh guy, which I'm pretty sure I have seen. I don't think I've seen it called Taisui before, because that's technically the Chinese name. Um, but I'm pretty sure I've seen the, like, weird curse lump before in, like, other Japanese fiction. Oh yeah, no. It's like the it's like the fucking um the UFO and um and uh Biken's things. There is like a curse lump. There was also it was also known as another the curse lump was also known as another thing. It was also known as Feng. Yeah. Um which um has been sometimes attributed to Tai Sui, but not always the case. You know, there's some some criticism going on in there. Yeah. But like I'm I'm pretty sure I've like in Okami, I there's like there's some weird Curse goop piles that are just like eyes and arms. You have to like purify at a couple of points, right? Like as like obstacles. I'm pretty sure I've seen that. And like, I would argue that sometimes the design for things in like Final Fantasy seem very much like that. If you you know look at a Hecti crossways, <laughs> those guys got a lot of eyes. And sometimes have a lot of hands. Um, this is just a very funny note, by the way, that I uh, I I looked up because I was double checking on some stuff in uh on Wikipedia. Um, and they have like three sources for this, so I think it's pretty solid. But uh, apparently, in more traditional, like, Chinese thought, there are, because uh, there's supposed to be a a, a 60-year cycle, there are 60 Taisui Jingzhen gods. It's in a lot of uh, Japanese folklore that they think of Taisui Jingzhen as a singular god. Considering that our Taisui Jingzhen is kind of like the perfected, you know, stackified form of the Khan, mm-hmm. who are a, a, a unity of guys, that kind of makes sense. Like, that they're they're actually an army of guys, but are also one guy. I had a lot of fun with the hive mind stuff. I do also want to say, like, I was kind of surprised the production value of this event was pretty high. Like I said, they had great, great use of the map. Um, oh yeah, pretty good sprite effects. And then you know the the cutscenes when melts, uh, you know, fucking letting loose with her noble phantasm. Uh, very good. Also very thematically appropriate. Um, because you know, uh, remember that uh, melt is uh, you know, taking on the aspect of the Le- Leviathan, uh, which is you know, a uh, primordial sea creature which is related to, uh, like, other things. Like, I think even in Melt's own lore, they talk about the Leviathan being related to the uh, Ugaritic uh, people's sea deity known as Lotan. So, like, Leviathan, the demon of envy, also kind of being, like, possibly a, uh, a, a like, misrepresented god is uh, pretty cool. Uh so, you know, they, they kind of have their own takes on it. So, yeah, this event's very well very well put together. Like I said earlier, I do think that the currency requirements are a little high for the, the post-game cleanup stuff, the post-story. Um, e- even with Tai Sui added, like, you're not getting that many, that many drops. Um, and boy, howdy, do they, they're not fucking around with the, you need, what, Lost Belt 2 cleared to do this? Yeah. So those, those bonus quests for the NP ups are, are they're, they're tough. I do find it hilarious that that in every single one, it's Tai Sui hanging out with people playing. Like I just love the little thing. Like one has um, one has him just hanging out with Voyager. The other one has him um, Asterios and um, and um, I forgot the banana's name. No, it's it's uh, that's the one where it's with uh, Ibaraki. That's right. Ibaraki, yeah, Ibaraki and Asterios <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> Asterios, Asterios, and Tice, we were called flunkies. <laughs> yeah, and, and then <laughs> Ibaraki is boss? Question mark? <laughs> no, it's great. Another one where you have cooking class and you have, you know, veteran cook. Um... <laughs> Sorry, I sneezed into a cough. Yep. I was expecting that one. Ooh. You have veteran cook, you know, Benny Enma, and then Kiyohime, and, and then Kiyohime over there, and then Tice, is like, you know, first year student. I'm just like, 
I'm just imagining these, these interactions. I was like, mm, my heart. Well, yeah, that's something that's like implied and a little bit strictly stated that the servants are kind of treating this magical island as a vacation spot. Like, obviously, Morgan is literally uh, performing unlicensed ray shifts to the island, but lots of different characters are cycling through because it's a neat little area. No, again, it's like it's the secret. It's the secret summer. It's the secret summer event. It really is. Very much so. Yeah. Or spring break, I guess I'll call it. And, you know, I mean, Lambda was already her summer version. Wuzetan gets a summer. Morgan gets a summer. Now we just need Summer Aresh. Come on, make it happen. Complete the circle. But yeah, so uh, it's it's all around really good. Uh, let me see. Was there? I think there was something else I was going to mention about the story. I did mention earlier that I think they did a very good job of like the the uh, the Trunk Sisters introduction. It's very good. And then kind of the climax being like, Hey, by the way, uh, if you guys don't know, uh, you're worshipped as deities in your home country now. So, uh, you know, actually, I I like how they did a fucking as you know on the fame bonus. Mm -hmm. Which is something that if you're familiar with with Fate's Day Night is mentioned a couple of times in the the very earliest media, but doesn't usually come up a whole lot in um, FGO just because the servants we run into are weird. But uh, a very, a very fun little little time. So it was a great nod. Uh, and Axe and Patron Chat has asked how good Taisui is as a unit. Uh, well, he's been out for a little bit, so it, uh, normally this would be the time to do a welfare corner. I did not formally write some notes on this, but we can recap him pretty quickly. Let me actually grab some some stats to see where he's at. Um, I've I'm still like in the process of leveling, so I haven't used him on everything, but I've taken a t- couple cracks with him. As like an alter ego, um, and and as a welfare alter ego, I think he's doing fairly well. Uh, let me see those stat caps. So let's see, alter de ego, ba 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 ba. Okay, so he is uh lower on the attack side, but higher on the HP side for the four star slot. Uh, which is funny because um his primary competition in the attack and HP department is uh the Mecha Ellies and Passion Lip. Somehow Lip has ended up being the, like, uh, highest attack, and she's uh, tied uh, for HP with the Mecha Ellies. So Alter Ego is a very interesting class selection. But his NP, which you are hopefully getting to 5, uh, hits all enemies with a timed debuff, Taisui's Misfortune, uh, which then, uh, which is activates first, by the way. That uh, triggers when, they are, when the enemy is killed. It reduces everybody else in the enemy's defense uh by 20 percent for three turns it gives them 1k curse damage for three turns uh also gives them evil curse uh for three turns to double it so they're actually taking 2k and also precurses them with 2k damage for five turns and does bonus damage to man and it's an uh uh aoe uh arts it's a little low on the hits but that's probably pretty good especially if you're doing curse teams of which there are a few brews you could do some curse focused stuff uh, so overall, you've got a very, very solid NP because you're looking at probably a free NP5 with trait damage. And because the um, on death debuff triggers, it, it gets applied first. It's like doing your NP gain with hits before applying instant death, right? So if you kill those guys, like you're killing adds and you have a boss left over, you're going to apply all those debuffs, which is pretty good. That's that's actually a very good way to formulate that. Uh, he has party wide, you know, ten to twenty percent arts, uh, t- five to ten stars, and ten to twenty percent NP gain. That's his reflection of Jupiter skill. Pretty normal stuff. Uh, he has a targetable guts and uh, debuff immunity and uh, buff removal resistance, which is a pretty good support skill. And then his final skill is uh, three turns of NP damage, ten twenty to thirty uh, percent seals all enemy skills for one turn, which can be very helpful. And is a twenty to thirty percent battery. I think. Let me double check. Yeah, all of his skills uh, are all the same cooldowns, so they should all be roughly on sync. Uh, he also has Magic Resistance A and uh, Divinity A minus. He also has Item Construction, so his debuff stick. But a uh, pretty pretty high level uh, passives there. I'm very curious um, why his append skill is anti assassin. Not really sure what uh, what our implication there is. Isn't the mm-hmm. the uh, boss version of Dagon a Berserker? Not sure. Could be referencing someone else. It could be something else, yeah. I think there were some Fishmen Berserker or Fishmen Assassins earlier. Definitely some of the mobs in the event were assassins. It could also just be because he's supposed to be like an immortal, like an actual immortal being. Um that like that's why, you know, it's hard to kill him. But it's a uh a, a pretty good selection of skills. 
you've got team support, you also still have personal damage amps, and for an NP5, a uh, pretty good one. Like I said, if you like to play around with cursed stuff, which is getting, you know, more expanded all the time, uh, it's a pretty fun one, and I think his NP animation is pretty cool. Also, shout out to his uh, Noble Phantasm type, you know, normally it's like anti-personnel, anti-army. Uh, Taisui Jinjun's is just Calamity type A-rank Noble Phantasm. <laughs> I do like that they're out there being like, yeah, it's supposed to be, like, super ominous, but he's still all, like, Heldiste, you know? Oh, yeah, no, he, well, like I said, if you, um, he's still an evil little git, but, you know, he just wants to play and sunbathe and not get eaten without permission. You can eat him with permission. It's kind of hilarious. Yeah. Well, and I, I, that's also another thing. Dagon's plan is actually quite clever, right, of, like, trying to build the, the restorative, you know, flesh lump underground and then, like, uh, we've spread these as bait, these, like, the con are, like, you know, buds of just magical nutrient. They're magically delicious. <laughs> Literally. And so that attracts all the water monsters so that they will hopefully get powered up, and then, you know, they will build a warship that will correct Dagon, and then Dagon's just like, fuck it, I'll eat it myself. But he got, um, he got, uh, out at by, um, by Leviathan, another, you know, mythical sea creature. Well, and I do like that they explain that as well in story, that the reason why uh, Melt can, can consume them so fast is because of her Melt virus. Yep. Because of her special skill, she can basically slurp them up like a smoothie. So yeah, overall really fun times. And like I said, I I was pleasantly surprised when we brought in actual Mesopotamian Dagon as there, and so it was like, oh, this is why Arash is here. This is great. Yeah, no, it was all like, it does seem like the three were super fucking random, but no, they each actually had a very specific reason for being there. Yeah. Uh, Wu Zetan obviously knew a lot about the actual, like, esoteric philosophy involved with Tai Sui. Yep. And Russia goes there because there's, you know, an actual Mesopotamian god there. And Melt's there because, guess what? There's a bunch of fucking mythical water creatures hanging out. Yeah, there's water monsters. And she is also a water monster. Surprise. It all came together at the yeah. end. No, it's good. Good event. Thumbs up. I, I enjoy it. it. Yeah. And like I said, Mor- Morgan's cameos are just fucking hilarious. Oh, I like how she first showed up with Habitrot, and then Habitrot wandered off, and Morgan was just like, hmm. Yes, H- Habitrot runs into uh, one of the little guys and is just like, oh yeah, we're- it's playtime now. <laughs> and I think that was the first instance of Morgan petting a con, and that's why she didn't like take off after her. She was just like, I could go, mm, but no, I've got better things to do. Also, the like the twist of like, oh, you thought we were in the ocean, but no, uh, it's actually a lake. We've been teleporting uh, to freshwater. Yep, doing all the lake stuff. Yeah. I thought that was neat. Yeah, no, it, overall very very well written, pretty cool. I like it a lot. Very good twists. Yeah, no, good vibes. Appreciate it. Alrighty. Uh, well, we are just under two hours of recording time. We got a few more things to get through. Woo. Including, I'm pretty sure. Um, like I said, I'm pretty sure we're correct. Mm. Uh, but. Uh, do do stop me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure because we skipped last week's episode, which would have been the 5th, and we did not do Fanservant Friday right away on the 29th because that was the pregame and doing lots of other stuff, uh, I still owe the people the Fanservant Friday for last month, uh, I'm reasonably certain. And our winner last month was uh, Lancer Maliger. I've also posted the poll for this month, and slightly surprisingly, um, I admit it's because probably because it was relevant, uh, because Count Cagliostro was added, but um, that sent me down a spiral of like, uh, what was the deal with you know the Comte de Saint Germain? Uh, so I put him on the list, and uh, people are super going for that one. That one's winning by a wide margin. So oh, nice. uh, I hope you like learning about more uh, weird medieval occult guys. Um, which also uh, I put Caster on the list. There are probably going to be arguments in the profile that just like Cagliostro, you could also say Pretender because. We don't even know what the fuck the Comte de Saint Germain's real name was supposed to be. He, he he's a guy who just kind of shows up, um, but also he is associated with a lot of like mystical traditions. So the idea that he may have just been a weird magus as well, like mm-hmm. a member of the Mages Association, also probably tracks. We'll see what happens when he probably wins. But like I said, I believe I did not get through the Maliger, and nobody is telling me that we did actually do it. So uh, we'll do that one. Uh, Maliger Lancer. Uh, Maliger is a, uh, Greek hero. Uh, he is originally from, uh, Caledon. Uh, Caledon, which is in, uh, you know, Atolia. That's one of the mountainous, uh, 
regions of Greece. Uh, it is not currently settled, uh, but you know we we can see the historic ruins of what was there. Uh, if you are wondering why that may sound familiar, but haven't put it together, uh, Caledon is in the Caledonian Boar. Yeah. So uh, that was uh, uh, it was once ruled by uh, King Oenius. Uh, who was supposed to have uh, introduced uh, winemaking to the region, but uh, he he did a little fucky wucky and he forgot to uh, properly honor Artemis with some stuff. Uh, so uh, she sent uh, a boar to fuck up their wine yards for a long time until some guys fixed it. Uh, but before that, uh, Maleager is usually counted as an Argonaut. Uh, he has been mentioned as, as one of the Argonauts. Uh, and this will be important for stuff later, but... Um, he has a uh, questionable uh, parentage mm-hmm. uh, because uh, his mother, uh, Queen Althea, or just Althea, there's a couple of spellings of the vowels, um, she was obviously the wife of Onius, uh, but also the same night uh, that uh, Maleager was conceived also banged Ares, so we, uh, we truly do not know. Um, you know, uh, that is, is recorded as some, so it's, it's possible that he's a demigod or he might just be a guy. Uh, the myths are not really concerned. Uh, I'll, I'll spoil it for you now. He does have divinity, but it's at D because it's like, we don't know. Divinity is a passive skill we can throw around a lot. Uh, the primary thing that, uh, people know about him, uh, is, is twofold big myths. Uh, the first is, uh, the actual, uh, uh, story about him is that uh, uh, while she was pregnant with him, his mother got a visit from the Fates, the Morii. Good job. Um, and they showed up and basically said uh, your son is going to be cool. Uh, specifically, Clotho said he would be noble. Lachesa said he would be brave. Uh, but then Atropos uh, picked up a piece of wood uh, burning on the hearth and said he'll only live as long as this piece of wood is unconsumed. Um, and so uh, this is, you know, ju- he's just been born. His mother's laying in bed. So she jumps up out of bed and rips the, the piece of wood out of the fire, you know, and uh, buries it. So uh, he he has a classical Greek uh, fate. Uh, he's basically going to be strong and brave. And so long as the log isn't burned, he's not supposed to die yet. It's not his fate. But when the log does get burned, he will the die. Uh, and actually, of oh. course, in the classic Greek fashion, this does come back because after spending some time uh, among the Argonauts, uh, he is believed to have been uh, uh, have worked with uh, Atalanta, uh, the great huntress. You know her. You love her. You love to see her. Um, when the Caledonian boar is fucking everybody's shit up, uh, Onius tells Maleager to do the classic Greek thing uh, and basically prototype D and D because he's just like. Go, my son, and find all of the Greek heroes you know. Uh, so uh, Maleager gathers up uh, lots of various heroes he would like. He's got a few uncles involved. He grabs a couple of other people going on around. Uh, and he also uh, gets Atalanta, you know, the uh, hunters he knows best. And also, usually, the stories interpret as has a crush on. He thinks she's real Nito. I mean, she is. She is pretty cool, yeah. Um yeah. So they go and hunt the, the Caledonian boar. Um, the legend goes that uh, Atalanta was the one to uh, get first blood upon the boar, but it was yes. Maleager who actually lands the killing blow. Uh, as the one who killed it, he gets the honors of like doling out the meat and skins, you know, the trophies. Um, and uh, Mal- Maleager, uh, being the, uh, the, the uh, tier three twitch sub that he is, gives Atalanta the rewards because she did get first blood, obviously. Um, his uncles don't like that. They're very mad that a woman got the prize, even though uh, I- I'm pretty sure, according to most myths, they didn't do shit. Yeah. Um, and they try to take it back, and so they get in a fight, and uh, Maleager kills them, uh, you know, kills his uh, mother's brothers and a couple of other guys because they're, uh, uh, you know, uh, very mean. Um and then, uh, upon hearing this in a fit of peak, uh, his mother throws the brand into the fire, uh, and that kills him, basically instantly. Um, there's not really a lot that said exactly what 
is uh uh supposed to have happened to her after, but you know, usually some other appropriate uh you know, mythological uh moment happened. Usually most reports basically uh she, you know, realizes that it was bad and commits suicide in some way, but you know, it's it's just one of those classic stories of like yeah, uh, his his mother gets that that brief moment of just like that little son of a bitch, you know, throws it in the fire and then goes, "Oh, I shouldn't have done that. That was bad of me. <laughs> I shouldn't have used my uh my son's magical off button. It's okay. Something else dumb would have happened to him, I'm sure, because that's just how Greek fate goes. When the more okay. I show up to your fucking crib side and lay a prophecy on you, you're fucked. Okay, fucking Wikipedia. I need some goddamn. Okay, hang on. All right, never mind. Never mind. Never mind. You getting too deep in the hole? Yeah, no. I'm I'm reading up Maliger, and it says his consort was Cleopatra. I was like, wait a goddamn fucking minute. It, no, it's not that Cleopatra. It's a different one. Yes, the daughter it's of Ida and Arpessa. It's because the the Greeks reused a lot of names. Yes, but yeah. Um, there is also some follow up of like what he was doing in the underworld. Uh, when Heracles had to pop on by. Remember, Heracles also an Argonaut. Um, when when Cerberus comes out. Um. Uh, you know, and, and stuff. Uh, Maliger's the only shade who doesn't retreat because he's yep. a baller. Uh, yeah, and no, he so... does ask Herc to look out for his sister, but uh, I'm pretty sure with most of Herc's brides, that didn't work out. No. Uh, I do also I love this note that, that, that I did not that I did not include into my servant profile because it's like a couple of lines in the Wikipedia, but I should actually uh, uh, double check in it. But uh, uh, apparently, Pliny the El- Elder wrote down in Natural History that, according to Sophocles, he believed that um, uh, amber are uh, is the tears shed for Meleager by guinea fowl, which are called uh, Meleagrides, because his sisters were apparently so sad that they turned into birds. Very yep. common Greek thing. Being so sad, you turn into something. So yeah, like, all around, uh, a very classic Greek hero. Um, he was pretty cool. He was noble and brave. He was an Argonaut. He killed a big bad monster. Uh, he was immediately undone by his terrible no good fate. Uh, classic Lancer material. So yes, uh, went with Lancer for this because he is supposed to have used a spear to kill the boar. Uh, he's you know the prince of Caledon. He is an Argonaut. Uh, went with lawful good for the alignment. Um, you know most 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 Greek heroes are relatively lawful and good for their time period. And in general, while he did do a couple of murders, most of them were in defense of a woman, which is. Mildly unique for Greek heroes, uh, you know, uh, it, not very common to drink your respect women juice back in the day. So uh, lawful good probably fits all around a good lad. Uh, strength A, endurance B, agility A, magical energy C, uh, luck D. He is a lancer after all. Uh, NP B plus. The Greeks had strong opinions about women, some of which we probably are not necessarily for the best because we allowed them to write down. There's something very distinct about the way the poets describe Pandora of like, oh yeah, when the gods really wanted to fuck us up, you know what they did? They created women. Hot women who are here to fuck our shit up. You can tell that that guy had some issues to work through. Yeah. Not that like I don't believe that like a bad run-in with a hot woman could really fuck your shit up, but like saying that all women are a curse from the gods to fuck your day up is, you know, it's a look, shall we say. But it's so cool. There are cool ladies in, in the Greek myths as well, but it's just interesting how we captured their societal snapshot. Uh, anyway, Maliger is a lancer, so his only real, uh, like, normal class skill passive would be a medium level of magic resistance. Pretty normal stuff. Uh, for his personal <laughs> skills, uh, like I said earlier, Divinity D, which usually in FGO goes in the passive slot. Uh, also, Bravery B+, this is a skill we see on a couple of other Argonauts, but, uh, you know, Bravery represents valor, mental fortitude. It cancels out fear, confusion, and charm and increases your melee attack. Ooh, sorry, excuse me. Don't pretty burpy all of a sudden. Uh, this, I believe, is like attack up and then attack debuff resistance up is the default form. It's a plus, so you can probably work around some of the defaults. But among the Argonauts, Maliger is very well, highly ranked. Um, there are some you know, versions of the Argonauti where uh, Maliger is second only to Herc in terms of skill and valor. I believe it. He's, he's got a lot of rep, you know? And again... The kid's got a magical prophecy saying he's going to be strong and brave and live so long as you don't burn this piece of wood. So, like, that's that's pretty good. You know, it's not quite like, uh, like you know, uh, Herc oh. being half Zeus and also uh, having that uh, magical hair of mommy milk. I know, I'm sorry. I'm just thinking, it's another Lancer that got done in by a fucking boar. Yeah, basically. 
It keeps <laughs> happening. Like I said, M- Maliger is. So- I'm so shocked he hasn't come up before in Fate because he is a quintessential Lancer's Lancer. Well, looking at it, they might. I don't know. Maybe they might be a little. Con- well, previously they might have been a little concerned about messing with the Atlanta because in some scenarios he does say that Atlanta was his consort. Yeah, not uh, his wife. I mean, so. I think they could write it around as just like it's. It could be an unrealized romance. You know, because she's yeah. got her own issues to work through. I do well, also yes. believe if you're going to waifu Atalanta that I'm pretty sure they still go with the reason why she's part lion is that uh, canonically she has had a boyfriend in Greek mythology already. Um, yeah, but that was because she, it was because she because he cheated literally. Yeah, there was some Apple shenanigans. Um, listen, you know, be careful when you go to Aphrodite for advice. Seriously, what is with Aphrodite and apples? Listen. To, to quote OSP, Aphrodite, Greek mythology's ultimate shipper. <laughs> she will uh, build her OTP. She's got a fucking spreadsheet, okay? <laughs> but, um, yeah, but no, like, looking at, like, I was, because I've been reading up on Maliger while you've been yeah. talking about him, it's like, yeah, no, like, he, this dude's a, a pretty much a baller. Yeah, high quality guy. Uh, and, you know, to go to that point, uh, Second, uh, or, well, third in the list, but, you know, uh, next personal skill I talked about is Hunter's Charisma, ranked at B, uh, Mm -hmm. because he is a prince and a war leader, so he should have some kind of charisma, but also, specifically, he was known for assembling the Caledonian boar hunt. His dad was like, go, my son, find me, you know, uh, Greek heroes with attitude to kill this boar. So, uh, you know, he not only has uh, classical personal charm and leadership, but also has the ability to get a team together to kill a divine beast, by the way. Like, if you want to think about the way power levels in Fate work, the Caledonian boar was sent directly by Artemis. It's kind of a big deal. Like, we're, we're talking about the highest rank of phantasmal species here. So, pretty, pretty high level stuff. Uh, probably would be, like, team-wide attack up, and I like team-wide uh, wild beast trait damage up. Probably not a lot, but would still be a, a fun aspect to, like, put the whole crew onto this. I, I think it should double up. I think it'd be interesting if it doubled up with Greek heroes as well. That could also be a fun one, uh, you know, because again, he is he is an Argonaut. He's part of the squad. He would have the Argonaut trait and thus have synergy with characters like Jason. Uh, and also, just another interesting note because it keeps happening. Uh, final skill: intoxicating medicine C. Uh, because also, while it's not really talked about in his legend, this guy's also got kind of a pedigree um, in the the art of of healing and herbalism. Uh, his mother, Althea, was noted as a healer. She shares a name with several other, like, healing figures. And his father, King Onius, uh, learned the craft of making wine from Dionysus directly. Ha! Like, Dionysus was like, yo, dog, you gotta tell everybody else about this shit. And Onius was like, cool. Yo, you gotta, you got to check this shit out. Just hands you an amphora of wine. Uh, by the way, uh, Greek wine was incredibly strong. You had to water it down or you would get stoned as hell. Uh, that's why there were so many wine cults in ancient Greece, because you could get real fucked up on classical Greek wine. But he is a hunter. He's out in the field. He should have a very good understanding of herbal and folk medicine uh, and be useful for, you know, curing poison, infection, and relieving pain. So probably not a very large targeted heal, but definitely like, uh, you know, uh, maybe a small heal and a remove, uh, what do they call it? Affliction type debuffs is dots, I think. So like, you know, rem- remove uh, inflictions of dots and maybe make it, you could make it a short cooldown, something like Jack's surgery. Or you could also, because I did call it intoxicating medicine, talking about wine, you could tack on another thing. Like it could be a targeted dot removal and small heal for one ally, but also like hit all the enemies with like a low confusion chance for skill seal or something like that. You know, it depends on how, how gassed you want to make everybody. Uh, but also uh, two noble phantasms here, because I feel like this guy has a mode switch built in. So, uh, one noble phantasm is, uh, forgive, by the way, my horribly, uh, mass translated, uh, you know, Google translated Greek here, but this is usually how a lot of the Greek heroes' noble phantasms go. Uh, Kaigni Kalidon, with two Ks, because you would spell Kalidon with a K sound, uh, haunting the Caledonian boar, a B-plus anti-phantasmal noble phantasm. Uh, Mm. basically, not just a weapon, but the crystallization of the boar hunt as a noble phantasm. Artemis sends the great boar, a divine beast, to, you know, root among their vineyards. Uh, anybody who tried to capture it was killed. King Onius calls him to assemble a group of hunters. And so, uh, you know, Maliger uh, used uh, hounds and a boar spear to hunt down the boar. 
Uh, so he has a boar spear with a classic crossbar would be his weapon, and he can use it to, uh, you know, uh, deliver powerful blows that are conceptually strong against uh, phantasmal species. Also, you know, we, we like to put a little extra spice on there. I put some notes about, like, because I don't know if the, you know, uh, boar hounds would actually be represented as well. Uh, that would also be very funny among the Lancer crew if he also had dogs. But uh, the spear can smell bud like a hound and tracks the enemy to strike the mortal blow. So, uh, you know, classic power-up stuff. He's got a bo- he's got a spear that kills b- magical boars. It's a spear that, that's good at killing magical boars. Probably uh, bonus damage against, you know, uh, wild beasts again. Uh, but the other one is uh, a uh, B-minus rank anti-personnel noble phantasm. Medagos Davlos. He shall live until the brand burns. Uh, so this is basically, like I said, kind of like a, 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 a hidden noble phantasm effect. Basically, so long as the piece of wood is unburned, he can't die. Uh, so that should mean that in normal, like, heroic spirit terms, uh, he has a strong, like, always-on conceptual defense. He's just, you know, um, he si- basically, I did the classic prophecy math. Um, because it says he will only live while the wood isn't burned, that means that he cannot die until the wor- wood is burned. You know, so he will just naturally shrug off stuff. Uh, I don't actually know if this would be the NP that triggers. This could be a skill, but I'm I'm imagining a stackable guts. Um, but the uh, the the main effect though is if he calls the the true name, he uh basically goes Kaioken. Uh, he's gonna burn down his own brand uh, because I'm a sucker for tropes. And so, uh, burns up his own magical energy to wreathe his body and spears in flames. But when the brand is eventually burned up, so is he. So it's, you know, classic death or glory stuff. Uh, if you wanted to say the wood's in his spear, that'd be a great place to put it. But obviously, you should have a normal spear. The Melagross Davos would probably be a skill, which would be, like, guts stack. When you proc the guts, like, charge NP, get a huge, like, attack or NP damage up. Maybe even add, like burn on basic hit. Uh, but then it would probably come with a, like, after three turns, he fucking dies kind of drawback, you know? Like, you can use the guts and turn it into a big DPS boost, but if you uh, run out your time too long, he's going to uh, kick the bucket. Yeah, a little bit like Angra's skill. Uh, taking, that would be a very funny way to do it. Uh, somebody in chat suggested taking bonus damage from uh, fire, like Orion takes bonus damage from poison. Since burn is a stat, that would be very thematically appropriate to work it all out. You know, he is, you know, kind of like working these two ends. But yeah, um, for physical design, I mean, there's a lot of different stuff you could do with Greek heroes. Um, I'm imagining him kind of in like, you know, very uh, ranger or woodling styles, like leather armor, maybe some capes and cloaks. Those are pretty cool. Obviously, the boar spear is necessary. Probably when you get to like the final ascension, like literally have his hair become fire kind of a thing, you know? increase the max level uh, kind of a thing. Um, we do know what the the boar hide is supposed to look like because of Atalante and Atalante Altar, so you could work some of that same design language into his design. Um, though, obviously, he would not have the, the, like, you know, Caledonian metamorphosis type ability because he didn't keep the skin. Also, honestly, I don't think he lived long enough to keep the skin after. It's I don't know how fast the news was supposed to travel in ancient Greece, but it was supposed to be pretty, like, point A to point B there. Uh, I don't think he would actually go mecha mode. Like I said, we don't even know for sure if he's supposed to be a demigod. He could just be a guy. He definitely should not be as enswollenated as Herc, but should probably be more buff and more of a cool guy than Jason is. I mean, you know, like I said, this isn't really suggested in the Argonauts. If anything, the character who fits the Lancer archetype among the Argonauti is technically Herc. Herc is the guy who, like, supports Jason through all his problems, but I could totally see Maleager as the Lancer among the Argonauts as just, like, you know, keeping everybody on the up and up. Oh, no, like, I I cannot imagine him. Good, decent lad. Yeah. Who just wants to impress the girl he likes. Yes. And which, you know, and again, would, would be a funny way to slot in because Adelante does remind everybody that, like, the Argonauts were weird, okay? Like, she wasn't technically literally the only woman among them. Uh, especially once we add, you know, uh, Medea Lily. But I I think because uh, uh, Pollux is so scary, I don't think anybody treated Pollux like a girl, since she would, you know, box with Herc. So I, I think there's some great stuff. He'd be a great addition to the Team Argonauts. Uh, also, I do believe that they don't have anybody for Lancer coverage. You know, they're mostly uh, 
you you've got uh an archer, a saber, well a couple sabers, a couple berserkers, you know. So we've we've got some more room in there. No, because I think that the Atalante's category straight up uh like her her profiles and stuff straight up call out the guy from her myths and uh Maleager is supposed to be before that. But yeah, uh like I said, you know, not not necessarily having a like mythical spear per se, but the fact that he's supposed to have killed the boar with a boar spear, I'm just like, oh, this guy's a lancer through and through. Fights a boar, done in by his own, you know, fu- basically, I know what, you know, prophecy of the fates is different, but he was basically done in by a geisa. Like, he had a fate pronounced over him and it caught up. I'm not sure what the Morii were thinking when they when they hit him with that one, but, you know, I don't actually, I'm not actually sure what the what the fates are supposed to be doing most of the time in Greek mythology. You know, just kind of hanging out, measuring everybody's thread. Yeah, no, I don't think he knew the myth um, because Althea just, uh, according to the stories I read, just buried it under the palace. She she did the classic thing. She dug a deep hole and threw it in and covered it up. Um, don't ask me how she managed to get it back so quickly to throw it in the fire. But, you know, it's good stuff. Classical Greek stuff. I know you you Greek guys will, will love all this. And like I said, um, while you can support us on Patreon at the 5 and up level to uh, vote in these polls, uh, Comte de Saint Germain has a pretty strong lead, so I'm going to go ahead and predict that that will probably be our pick. Uh, for this month, uh, but I do have a couple of other uh, selections rattling around. If you wanted to vote on some stuff, um, leaders in my backlog forever. But we do have uh, Sing Shi, writer, uh, the Chinese pirate queen, uh, Berserker Beethoven, and another Greek classic, uh, Neoptolemus, Neoptolemus, the son of Achilles, uh, who is our second place. Though so again, it's a pretty wide margin. But keep your eyes and ears open, chat. Let's see how long did that go. It was about twenty minutes, so we're doing good. Uh, that means it's time for what we call What's Up? Talking about stuff. Let me see. Uh, it is almost midnight, so I don't want to be here forever. Because I do have to edit the episode. And, and uh, while I don't think... Uh, yeah, I don't know what Loth's doing. I don't know if we'll get back into Helldivers. Well, I, we don't have necessarily have to do uh, What's Up if we want to get out of here. Uh, no, I do want to do a little bit of stuff. So we'll we'll see how long it takes. Um, one of them will depend on how much you want to talk. So that's, that's up in the air. But um, I guess because it will be shorter, probably. I can, you know, do some brief overlap talk about Unicorn Overload. We mentioned it earlier. Mm-hmm. Uh, game's selling very well. It's out. I finally picked up my copy because uh, Amazon was running a little bit of a sale. Uh, you know, best price in store to, to get it about, you know, I think it was like 15 or 20 bucks off. Uh, and I've been planning on picking it up anyway, so just timing-wise it worked out. Mm. Uh, so I'm, I'm only a few hours in. You know, I've, I've done the, the first couple of story missions and then done a couple of the, like, optional liberation battles while running around the map. Uh, I do want to say that uh, you've commented on this both on Let's Talk and other places. Uh, you're definitely right in the way it starts off. The story is very boilerplate. Yes. It is very much the quintessential one of those stories. Uh, the game opens with, you know, uh, the sexy queen sending her only son away as the city is besieged by the most obvious evil emperor ever. <laughs> the guy has horns on his helmet. You know he's wrong. Um, and then the plot actually kicks into gear when years later, the you know the the lost prince's uh, isolated you know remote township is finally attacked by the bad guys. But there's more twists. So you know, um, it's it's very very on the nose. You know. Mm-hmm. Um. I also feel like there are a lot of thematic hearkenings to Fire Emblem. You uh, literally have a Jigen-type character in the form of Joseph. Um, yep. If, if you guys don't know, uh, the Jigen is uh, it's named after the original character from like Fire Emblem 1. But uh, he's that archetype of a Fire Emblem guy, which is usually a cavalry unit, usually an older man who is already pre-promoted. Uh, yep. And he's a very high-level unit who uh, does kill the shit out of anything you run him into but also is usually, like, max-leveled, so he has a, a risk of soaking up experience for your guys. This is less of a problem in Unicorn Overlord because you can stick guys with him in his unit, uh, farm some EXP that way, which I have been doing, uh, just because he's he's a cavalry guy, so he's really fast. So he's good at uh, blocking trash, block out baddies. Uh, I also appreciate that you get a fuck ton of these, um, like, tactical manuals. Oh, yeah. So you get lots of these little uh, EXP items to, like, even out all of your characters, uh, which I do think is important because I was kind of surprised that the uh, the game starts throwing extra units at you very fast, way faster than you can uh, like unlock more 
uh, slots for additional units you can deploy. Uh, not necessarily for adding more spaces in units, but it's one of those things where, like, you know, the game is teaching me a lot of the basics of, like, formations that are good kind of a thing. So it's like, mm -hmm. they really throw a lot of stuff at you fast, which gives you options, but it's also, I'm glad that there's EXP items because it's like, I haven't found a good slot to, you know, put my thief in yet. Uh, now they've given me an archery boy to include that I'm like, that's pretty good. Gotta fucking slot this Rolf kid in there somewhere, so. Oh, don't worry. It doesn't even start the mad count uh, that you can just, you know, hire, you know, nondescript mercenaries. Yeah, I haven't. The game has alluded to that feature, but I haven't actually unlocked that yet. But yeah, no. So, like, you can also just hire faceless guys. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I will say, um, you'll find it eventually because it's tied to one of the characters. But you will find a um, a repeatable combat mission that will get um, experience to your guys and just give you more of the combat treaties to use. So you can get your uh, farming on. Get your yeah, grind I, I know on. that there were repeatable battles, but you're right, I haven't found them yet. But we're we're still you know working through because there's like liberation and stuff. But overall, uh, it's fun. You know, the gameplay loop is pretty pretty simple. I, I am already at a state where some of the, the simpler battles I am, like, pressing the start button to skip. Because, oh, you yeah. know, the, the OG, oh, the fourth time they sent a House Carl unit to be fucking obliterated by my Lord and Hoplite combo, uh, you know, we don't need to see that. Yeah, That's no, if, it's, if, you see, if you see you get the kill, it's just like, nah. Yeah. Uh, but I appreciate that the game does have a straight-up skip. You can see what the predicted HP, like, loss on both sides is. And I can just go, nah, I don't need to see this. Um, I also like that you can adjust formations pre-every fight, basically. Oh, yeah. So, uh, we're having fun. I like our little cast of characters, so it's it's going to be a good time, and we'll be getting deeper into it, uh, I'm sure, later. But yeah, I've, I've fired it up and started it. Uh, but the main thing I did want to touch on, uh, and again, you know, it depends on how much you want to talk about it, but uh, you have been, pl been playing a lot of Enshrouded, my friend. Yeah. You are the Shroudman. Um, and, uh, I, you know, as usual, when I see you into stuff, the people like to hear from you. Uh, I'd love to know, uh, what your thoughts are so far. Pick your brain. Well, uh, so, yes, I picked up Entrouded. It is a... Here. So, Entrouded is a survival action role-playing game by Keen Games. It launched via Early Access in January... And is set for like a full release in 2024. So of course it's one of those, it's one of them PC games that's all about surviving and crafting. And like I said, it's been getting very good reviews on Steam. And Loth actually brought it up to me because um, while Loth doesn't necessarily, I don't like, I don't think necessarily Loth likes survival crafting games like on its own. But I do think he likes he likes playing games. <laughs> <laughs> there it is Sorry. I, I saw the steam window pop up but it hadn't filled in the, the text but when you laughed i'm like oh it's gonna be loft playing something is it enshrouded yes it is all right well i'm just gonna open it up and try it myself well um uh loft suggested to me as a game that we can play together because well off doesn't necessarily like the game on its own like he's spaded this he likes playing these games with other people so i'm like okay sure um because I like hell diving. I do. Unfortunately, I can only hell dive for like two or three hours. Then I have to go. And yeah, yeah. um, because believe it or not, um, uh, some people don't might not realize this, but time flies when you're hell diving. Most missions are like fucking like forty minutes, so you can spend like twenty minutes doing a like twenty three minutes just doing a single mission. Three like when we get on the higher difficulties, you do three missions. That's like just an hour for one set. Two, so it's like. Two sets? That's two hours just yeah. going, and it's like it's like it it's it it sucks up time a lot, and also there are there are times when you're just like no, we're we're done for the day. Yeah. Well, yeah everybody log into FGO by the way. Get the pajo. So, um, I picked it up, and of course it's right off the bat. I don't want to say it's anything to write home about. It's just another voxel based survival um survival game, um. Basically, what happens is the world has gone to shit. The world is slowly being covered in the shroud, which seems to be basically a fungal infestation that turns people um, fucking crazy and corrupts the land. You oh, are the cool. flameborn, someone with the fire in their heart that can resist the shroud and go and attack the shroud roots to take back the land. Well, you could take back the land, or you could spend like a ridiculous amount of time, you know gathering resources and crafting 
Unfortunately, the game doesn't necessarily have a big overarching plot right now. It's kind of just wander around, do whatever. Most of the quests involve running errands for your craftsmen. A system, a system that I do like is that you have to find NPCs to bring back to your base that will help you make shit. And for them to be able to make better shit, you have to go out into the world and find them things. Like you have to find a circular blade so you can make a table saw so you can cut wooden planks. You have to find a kettle so the farmer can make a cooking fire. You have to find... um, I can't remember what it's called, but you have to basically find this... um this thread making device so the hunter can you know make linen out of uh, flax you know and things like this uh and things like this you know you basically travel around the world exploring new locations and stuff and the thing i think i do like about shroud is that it's just it's not a randomized map uh, it's just one map and because it's one like it's it's just one map it, everything's always in the same location and you get like interesting places and there's ruins of towns to explore there's broken down towers forests mountains um all that stuff it's good to explore the problem is though i think right here is i think the 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 equipment to monster difficulty is not quite well balanced um because it has a leveling system. If you kill things, if you kill things, you know, you uh, mine certain areas, you get XP and whatnot, and you level up. And when you level up, you don't necessarily get stats, you get skill points, and then skill points lets you pick stats. It has a kind of Path of Exile, Final Fantasy X sphere grid kind of situation going on there, where you start from the central position and use your skill points to buy points and whatever. And you have the, the three classic colors. You have the red for the melee, the green for the range, and the blue for the magic. And they're like in the little spots in between, there's a little bit of overlap. Uh, me and Loth have been playing around a little bit with like certain builds and whatnot. But unfortunately, like I can't make a pure range player uh, work. Things just run up to you and want to give you the slap in. And if you don't have some constitution, you just die. Yeah, so it's, I, uh, it's in early access. So yeah, there's, there's probably some stuff to be ironed out. Yeah. But, um, it's it's a game that's quite fun just to run around and explore. Like I do enjoy doing this. They while they do like have some markers that mark stuff. Sometimes you'll just find like a mine, a mine shaft in the middle of the ground, a random ass tower. Um, I've had fun exploring the city of Pikes Reach, a city that fell to the shroud. Um, it's basically a ruined city, but it's like you can see like they like leaving they they do the thing I love in games where they just leave lore everywhere for you just to pick up a read and be like, mm hmm, mm hmm. I was throwing it like. Like, uh, one in Pike Street, remember, um, basically two people are going insane. And uh, the wife basically says, uh, I'm going to kill this man before he kills me. And if you go to the location, you can find a skeleton with a sword stuck in get out of it. And you can pick up that sword. I'm just like, oh, that's what we call environmental <laughs> storytelling. <laughs> so like stuff, stuff like that. Uh, combat is not really anything to sneeze about um, either. It's just click to swing. You have a block. You have a block and parry. You have a dodge roll. Oh, uh, I did a brief read, and uh, it it sounds like the designers kind of took some inspiration from Soulsborne, but we're not trying to make it a hard game like Soulsborne. Just still kind of like going for some of the the stylistic notes with like gameplay, and I guess probably world building a little too. It sounds like. Oh yeah, no, actually, um, Axe and Loth were talking about like, so this is just Dark Souls tool, right? You know, your flame theme. There's like rock going on. I'm just like, I don't know, guys. I haven't played Wait, Dark Souls just, 2, man. Is this just Happy Souls? Have we cracked no. the code? <laughs> no, it's not that happy yet. It's not that happy now. Uh, I'm sounds sounds like I might be interested. Maybe when it's a little further down on the dev cycle. Yeah, probably. Um, interesting. Um, uh, something that I do find interesting about the developers is actually the developer is directly taking uh player and fan input on what they want to improve. They actually released their roadmap not too long ago, taking the some of the most voted um features that fans that uh, the players want and are actively working on them. So more things are to come. Like uh, let me see if I can find the shrouded roadmap image. Do, 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 do. things planned they're like they're trying not to overcommit to everything but you know definitely want to hit things and they did just do one of the, like just like in the past month this that their uh, first update called the hollow halls which me and loth have tackled and have a uh, have a uh, screen through as we are being uh you know you know that you know that uh that uh me we have good luck i'm behind ten thousand skeletons yes yes no uh we had to go through those ten thousand skeletons 
It was a trip. Loft died many times. And neat. But, like, um, yeah, they've already talked about um, working on certain things and getting uh, things going. But, like I said, for, like, it's it's scratching that crafting survival because the crafting and building is the thing where I, I'm enjoying it. And they actually have some pretty good, pretty cool tools for it. They have a bunch of um, different materials. They have a bunch of predetermined shapes. They have um, ways to interact with the environment. And everything snaps together really nicely, I want to say. Ooh, that's like, that's the problem I have with some uh, craft crafting games is when you, like, for some odd reason, even though you're put, trying to put the square block in the square hole, it doesn't want to fucking work. Yeah, I haven't had any of those problems with um, this game. There are still some little, little bugs and tweaks here, especially when I'm trying to, like, flatten, like, land and stuff to get it going but i was like no i'm probably gonna keep playing this i think i've already put like 50 plus hours in this game in like the week no two weeks i've had this game for two weeks that i've gotten it but that's also because sometimes i'll just leave it running because unfortunately this is a little bit of an intensive game like like i said my computer my computer is not new and fresh and it never had like you know a top tier fucking uh gpu because i don't have two thousand dollars to fucking drop on a fucking gpu i don't understand how people do this I really what don't. The fuck does <laughs> people do apparently? I mean, yeah, it's true. Somebody's buying them, but I fucking, I fu- like, I did a payment plan for my computer, which has the equivalent of a medium tier graphics card in my new PC tower. Like, and that was still pretty pricey. I had to work it out over like five or six months. I forget exactly how much it was, but like, you know, what's well, true? You get to sit on it for a while, but you have to have the fucking capital to start with. Yeah, and that's only if you don't see the next new shiny one and be like, oh, 2000. But yeah, same. But um, uh, like I said, it is a little intensive. Loth had to really turn down his settings. And he actually turned them down too much so he didn't actually understand some of the textures that I was seeing. He, we had a great moment where he was like, what the fuck? When I was trying to show off some building materials and he couldn't understand what they looked like. <laughs> yeah, he had it too low poly. <laughs> yeah, he had it too low poly. Um... So, no, now seeing Loth and Axe going in, after this, I am probably going to, you know, get some water in me and jump back into it. I am planning out building a small village, so I want to get into that. Hey, go for it. Like I said, it's it's late. I'll put more Unicorn Overlord after I edit this. Overlord! Because that, 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 that game is straight, squarely in my, uh, my tactical strike zone that I'm enjoying right now. I knew you would. Oh, I mean, I always knew I would enjoy it. It's just, you know, getting on my backlog. I, I had to really, like, fight with myself and be like... God, I should really go back to P3R, and I'm just like, no, I don't feel it right now. I don't, I don't feel the JRPG. I've just spent 110 hours in seven rebirth. I'm, I'm good for a little bit. I need to percolate. But yeah, um, I would say, you know, like my own personal like preference. I like open world survival games, but also I feel like I need a little, a little bit of a hook to play them. Not just playing them with friends, because I like can. Like I've, I've played like seven days with you before, and some games I've, I, we have a lot of fun with, um. Uh, shit, I've forgotten the name of our other favorite zombie game. Project Zomboid. Project there Zomboid, yeah. Yeah, we got like it. Like I said, we're still waiting on the new build. What, That's the only that reason we're not playing. comes with oh, so much press and shift. Um, <laughs> we're all going to sprint to each other and do sit-ups in the in the bedrooms. But, like, like there, there are some games that have really tight gameplay loops I like. I have played a pretty decent amount of Minecraft, like, over over my time, even though it's not something I'm, like, super into right now. But I also don't like every single like crafting survival game, so uh, it's not, it sounds like in Shredder might be something. I is there a player limit? Do you th- do you know? Oh yeah, no, you can have uh, up to sixteen players on a single map. Okay, um, so you can have a little bit of wiggle. All right, yeah, so, no, so uh, should, be, should be no problem if I like I said I might wait for it to be a little more more mature in the future. But yeah, no, me, up. Axe, Aaron, and Lotha are currently playing. Yep, I will say that is a positive because like. For instance, if this was was Helldiver tier numbers, uh, that would mean I'm already boxed out of the crew, uh, as it were. Though for us, we usually play Helldivers in triples. Um, yeah. But uh, it's de- <laughs> sorry, Loth, Loth, Loth just reported in our uh, private tabletop cabal that he you know went to his home world, saw that he got the Steam alert that Lucky was playing in Shroud, and then crashed, so he had to reload anyway. But, like, it sounds like something I might be a little... Because it sounds like it's kind of up my alley, but you're also saying that, like, it's still got a little little wiggle room to get out, so maybe when it's a little more polished, I might consider jumping in. I have such a huge backlog of games, though. Yeah. We got shit to work through, because games are good. Lucky, uh... 
Sorry, my brain broke for a second. Stellar Blade comes out in like two weeks. Yeah. The Veebs. I am waiting. Like I said, news stories continue to come continue to come out. Yeah. And also, like oh, I said, uh, I'm, that's probably going to be like next next month's game for me because of how pay stuff is, but I'm still in. I'll see what's up. Actually, yeah, it's exactly two weeks. April 26th. But yeah, uh, well, you know, we're at, we're at about 2.45 uh, time recording anyway. Uh, if you don't yeah. have anything else specific to say about N Shrouded, uh, I'll leave you to the do, go join the boys in, in secret gaming and, and play it out while I uh, run this edit together real quick, because it is getting a little late as well. Mm -hmm. We do want the show to get done in a reasonable time frame, so we can probably wrap it up here. Had a good solid length of episode. Uh, so, sorry, I phrased that as a question and then continue talking. Do you have any other further thoughts about it to add? No, nope, not really. Okay. I'm doing a, a weird, like, pointing with my arms gesture. I don't know why. Come together like gator jowls. When the gator gets you, you're gone. Just like we're going to be gone on out of here. If you're liking this video, and seriously, if, if you've watched this far in, you know, like 2.45 in the raw recording, you don't know exactly what the edit's going to be like. But if you're still here right now, like the video. You like this video, like it. Click the like button. It's fine. It won't hurt you. It won't bite. I promise. I've liked many things. It's okay. But you can also subscribe to us to get more of this. Uh, and more uh, videos and streams. Uh, you know, they'll be uh, uh, wanted on whatever's going on with uh, Super Mega Ultra Bunyan. I added some extra superlatives in there uh, <laughs> later. But also keep up with our streams. Uh, we're still doing our uh, very regular stream series. I guess in reverse order, Wednesday, Final Fantasy fourteen. Still working on Endwalker. We're having a great time. I've been told that our next segment will be uh, pretty good. There'll be some stuff happening in it. Some things will ha occur. And you should, you know, keep up with it, keeping up. Uh, people generally seem well disposed when I changed the title of last week's episode uh, as To Garlemald, because that's what we were doing. So uh, if you want to know where I'm at, and check in. Tuesdays, we're still doing Fail Portrayal. We talk about Yu-Gi-Oh cards and other stuff, and yell about things, and we have fun. Other stuff. And Monday, we started a new stream series. Lucky and I are going to co-op through all of the career of Power Wash Simulator. We're just going to wash things and talk about other things. Actually, I thought it actually went really well. I think the conversation smooth went very smoothly. Yeah, we, we spent a little bit of time at the start like explaining mechanics, and then it was just, the moment we got to the playground, which was our first like really big map, it was just like, okay, well, we're just going to talk about whatever. And I, yeah, I think it flowed really well. Chat was very engaged, so I, I think it's good, and we'll, we'll keep up. It should not hopefully take too, too long. And then after that, then we, we got to set up. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'll, I'll admit, I'm I, talking about backlog, I'm adding more things. Uh, Everybody drink. Uh, OSP posted a detail diatribe on Shadow of the Colossus, and I'm just like, shit. Should we stream Shadow of the Colossus sometime? No, I think we're gonna be we're gonna be horrible at that game. <laughs> no, it is it is kind of janky. I really like Shadow of Colossus. It's also a pain in the ass. The I thought about it, but no, it's it's a pain in the butt. But it, I had those thoughts. You know, we're thinking about stuff. We got some other things it's to catch up on. But we'll 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 be in Power Wash for for a few weeks at least. The game goes on a little bit longer than you might think, Chad. Though many hands do make light work, so keep your eye on that. We'll also be back to uh, our APs this weekend, hopefully. We took a week off because one of our players, Dallas, had some stuff. Yeah. Uh, so we'll we'll be back in it. Uh, and also, if you happen to have listened to it, uh, Aaron, uh, also a member of this Tabletop Cabal, is planning a sequel to his uh, uh, series that uh, managed to parallel Dino Crisis without having any inspiration from Dino Crisis. Uh uh, you know, the mission to Benison Island. Uh, he's got a sequel for that brewing, which we will uh, probably be taking a little little time to, to fork into as well. Yeah. Also, I'm not too proud to admit that after playing Unicorn Overload for like two or three hours, I did immediately go, what were my notes like for Rain again? I mean, I'm glad. Yeah, no, it's it's good. I think Aaron might have predicted that first, but I know you also said like it'll probably happen. But it was definitely made me go like, what the fuck did I have written down? And I was pretty easily able to re reread over my notes and go, okay, yeah, got it. I remember what I was doing. Now, if you want me to remember the rules of rain, I don't. I, just, I, I have to reread the book, but I just remember it's one rule engine. That's all I'm gonna yeah. remember, man. That that's at least pretty easy to grab. But we're good. But yeah, no, I mean you are kind of that is you are kind of the. I mean your your character archetype's not very lord like if I remember. I don't don't remember what your your melee selection is like, but. We'll get back to it. I do still have a, a decent amount of world building when I get get back into it and like plotting. But like I said, I was yeah. There are a couple mage lords. Um, I think most people associate Lord and Fe with Lad of Sword, though part of that is probably Smash's fault. But like I said, I was able to like reread my notes and be like, ah, I remember what was going on here, which is good. Uh, we also have a very long uh, session zero on that somewhere. 
But yeah, so stay tuned for actual plays, stay tuned for streams and more stuff. Technically, we're in the middle of the outro, so I should also say to ring the bell so you always get notifications when we're posting new videos or streams. I should remind you to leave comments on videos. The algorithm likes that, and that means we like comments as well. And we do actually, like, I I, I know the comments are a little thin on the ground. Uh, a lot of people, if they have, you know, big, long questions to drop, they hit up Mailbag, which is also appreciated because we get to read them on the show. But I don't mind your comments either in the commento section, so hit us up there. Uh, you can also join our Discord. Link is always in the video description and channel page. Uh, we, you know, uh, you want to find some Helldivers to Helldive, you want to find some other stuff to do, you can hit us up there. We got all kinds of channels for all kinds of things. Check it out. Consider joining our channel memberships, you know, support us, uh, fiscally, and also get access to membership badges and emotes. And like I said at the front of the show, consider supporting us on Patreon. We're running monthly topic polls, you can get access to audio versions of our shows for as little as a dollar a month, or approximately ten dollars, with an annual subscription, which you can do. At higher levels, you can listen to us record the show live all the time. Get our special shout out at the front of the show and all those other fun Patreon credits. Uh, and generally, it's a really good time and it helps us out. I think that's all my usual outro stuff. So I guess we'll be seeing you next week for more Let's Talk FGO and stuff. Go FGO and stuff. <laughs>